Karate. He's three on two. He can hurry. Steal by Bix. And now Johnny Stremlau for New York gets it back to Sammy Bix. the second home, a crazy moment and a lucky break for New York. Dalton Tolt was watching it roll across the goal line and stopped it. The entire ball has to cross the line and the goal judge says it did not. Let's take a look. The ball will rebound off the shot. Villa will hit it wide. It'll hit the inside of the post, come back and hit Toth. It must totally clear the line. There you see Toth pushing it back on top of the line. The steamers lead two to nothing and almost made a three. Jungle can't get around Carl Rose. They hammer each other with a four. Foul Tucci for New York. The drive slapped down by Strobel. A scramble for the ball and Ilyevsky pounces on it. But the real importance of that was that Ilyevsky, or Carl Rose rather, was able to screen Steve Jungle from the crease, which is what he did not do in the game-winning goal Friday night. Bill Maxwell blew the whistle against St. Louis, and New York will get a free kick. It is the Steamers, two, and the defending MISL champions, nothing. With eight minutes and 34 seconds left to go in the first half. Omar Gomez brings it into the Steamer zone. Triple mark, he stays with it, is taken down by Rose. Lay on. St. Louis fans going to get two on one. Two on one, Razovac racing back. And a defensive gem by Val Tutsa. Tutsa leads the New York Sharks all the way from his defensive post. Tutsa coming in. And it's tackled away by Ty Peel. Steamers look sharp. The arrows do not. Razzadak gets around Peel. Well, Maxwell wanted to play on, but the alternate says, wait a minute, foul New York. We've got, and he's going to call it the other way as well. He's going to call it against New York. Maxwell was allowing to play on for New York. But Popovich, here's the difficulty, not that Popovich, that's the coach of New York, but Anatole Popovich has a whistle in his mouth as well. And the difficulty of indoor soccer with 18,000 fans is that players on one side of the field can hear a whistle while players on the other cannot. Eight minutes left to go in the first half. Popovich on the far side, Popovich on the near side, Nikitovich out there. Kyle, give me your lineup. I can't tell Vich, Vich is Vich. <laughs> on the near side, the arrows are trying to clear. Gomez is banged by Bellinger. Foul, St. Louis, New York free kick coming up. It has not been a very smooth game. It has been erratic, and it has been that way because of the tight marking and the quick changes of possession. Jungle coming in, Ilyevsky coming out. And up to the top of the first tier here in the checker dome. New York, again, wanting a two-minute delay of game penalty. Last year, they would have had it. But as we've told you in previous Friday night specials of the MISL on USA, but this year, it has to be a 100% intent to hit the ball into the stand. Mattia rips it around the board. Zilievsky is there to pick it off after its last rebound. Larry Holter moves one ahead. Running out to it is Johnny Hayes. Coming out is Dalton Colt right there to make the save. Quickly, he dishes it out for Clavillo. Now one Carlos Matia. Karasi, Steamers are pressing, and they're coming up with less to loose ball. Also right side for the Steamers, number one draft pick, Johnny Hayes. Nobody inside the crease yet for Hayes to try to get the ball into. Hayes, saved by Colt, and a shot by Kiel. Another save by Colt, he just slapped it away. Here's Matia along the board. Picked by Holter and goes down. There has only been one time penalty in the game. It was against the Steamers, and the Arrows did not score. Jungle on Slobo. He comes out. Gomez got his block by Steve Petra. A great defensive cover-up by the Steamers number four. In many ways, the pace in this game much more frantic than it was Friday night. J.C. Matia. The Argentinian defender for the arrow. Up for Karasi. Jungle had the pass. 
Jungle and Dellinger exchange words and forearms along the boards on the far side. And then quickly, the whistle blown as Slobo Ilyevsky is on the turf. His right knee, he had come out out of the box to make a diving clearance earlier against Jungle. And perhaps the foot of Jungle was able to hit the shin of Slobo Ilyevsky. Manny Schwartz is an adequate backup for St. Louis, but he has yet to play in the playoffs. Ethyl chloride now being applied. Bill Jennings, St. Louis trainer, is out there. Should the Steamers win today, a reminder again, game five, the final game, would be Wednesday night at the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. And you can see it right here on the USA Cable Network. As the game progresses, we'll tell you more about that. At halftime, stay tuned. We are going to have a special little look at someone very special to us. And we think you'll find it pretty entertaining. That's at halftime, along with... Highlights of the first half right here on USA for State 2. Here's how Slovo got hurt. Again, remember, Jungle the through pass. Bellinger unable to get up with Jungle. And there's the... He may have just strained something. He was not kicked by anybody. Arrows ball as we resume play. Ball start. Out in the neutral third with six minutes. And 35 seconds left to play. I am wrong. It will be a drop ball. Called by referee Bill Maxwell. And the Arrows get it again. Fernando Clevio. Grimlau on him. He goes for Kitson deep into the corner. Kitson trying to get free. Rose is called for holding. Carl Rose, number two. So you, you need a couple pounds of Vaseline to get by Carl Rose to get the board in that corner. Outside, Matias saved by Olyevsky. Olyevsky rifles it up, intercepted by Clavillo, who then falls to the turf after making a nice-looking play using his head. Billy Gazzone. So Paul gets it at the midfield line. Back for Gazzone in his defensive third for Matias. Matias pressured by Cacciatore. Spinning away, Cacciatore forcing Matias all the way back for Colt. And again, it almost cost New York. Steve Zungle working with Kitson. Zungle on the ball. Zungle double mark, but breaks free. Steve Zungle for Kitson. Coming in, going to the corner. Marked tightly by Sammy Bick. A fine looking singular effort by Steve Zungle. The ball went off as the steamer crossed the midfield line. Sammy Bick in center. For Cacciatore. Back for Bick. High off the glass for Stremlau, up in the air, up ahead of Sammy Bick. Mark Liveritz, coming quickly back from New York on the counterattack. Shot is wide, no one there for the rebound. And Carl Rose gets it out for Glavitt. The steamer defense is withstanding every challenge of the New York offense. Keogh ahead for Billups. But holding is called against the St. Louis Steamers. Keo has had more fouls called on him this weekend than he has perhaps all season. I've never seen him play with such spirit. The left-footed Nikitovic for Renato Chila. For a running Mark Liberate. Knocked away by Rose. Arrows controlling the ball of late. Unable to turn it into anything on the scoreboard. Grenister for Liberate. He has to go left. And everybody in the league knows it, including every one of the seniors. Liberich is down, but Bill Maxwell won't stop playing. And now he does. Liberich holding his right lower thigh or right knee. It has not been a very good playoff season for Mark Liberich after playing superbly in the last four games of the regular season, while Steve Jungle sat out due to a contract dispute, Liverich has not responded well with the return of Mr. Jungle. They are not on the field at the same time, and they do not play well together. Two goals in eight games is all. <laughs> you don't know the, whether it's the pain from the kick or the pain in the ice being applied to the eye. 
Remind you again, if Game 5 is necessary, we'll be back at Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York for Game 5, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard. St. Louis at New York, and as we told you at the top, it's the only place St. Louis has had any success against New York. Both of their victories out of the 12 games they've played have happened in New York. And look at one of the most interested parties in the building, Steve Petra. He doesn't want to give New York a breather, so he wants to see exactly how Mr. Liberich is progressing. <laughs> I wonder whether he's assessing what he needs to do to him to totally put him out of the game the next time. Bob Baldwin, Arrows trainer. Certainly a look of interest by Don Popovich, who had a long stint of his playing professional career right here in St. Louis for the old St. Louis Stars. He speaks fondly of those days, and he speaks nervously about the game tonight. Well, Al Trost used to play for Don Popovich with New York two years ago when he won the championship playing for the New York Arrows. Now he's trying to beat them. What Al Trost is saying to his players, no doubt, with 4.29 left to go in the first half, telling his guys to keep their concentration and keep their intensity level very high. That's what, to this point, has succeeded against New York. And the former member of the Cosmos, Mark Liveridge, limps his way to the New York bench. Taking a finger at someone. So the New York Arrows will move on without it. And we will have the second drop ball of the game. Up into the crowd and they give it to the St. Louis Steamers on the free kick. Four minutes, 27 seconds remaining in the first half. A friendly look at a friend at halftime. You'll want to stay tuned for that along with first half highlights. And there have not been many for New York. Don Ebert's elbow being held down in the corner again, but on the other end, Steve Jungle. Jungle weaving his way. The shot is missed. Nikitovich tried to corral the rebound. It blew right by him. Seamers counterattack. Villa right side. The drive in front. Senator is there with St. Lot. Disappointed oohs and ahs emanate from this checkered on crowd of over 18,000. Jungle with Bellinger back. Nifty footwork by Tony Bellinger to elude the MISL MVP. Bellinger across the midfield line. For Villa right side. 3.38 left to go in the first half. Seamers lead the New York Arrows 2 to nothing. But it is the Arrows leading in the series two games to one. Ball hitting referee Bill Maxwell. Maxwell in play in soccer. Villa breaks free behind Strenister, but Strenister is there quickly. Steve Petra trying to work the give and go with Ebert. Ebert wasn't there. Now Villa is. Foot race between him and St. Lot. And a fine defensive play by Franz St. Lot to take it away from the steamers, number 11. Now the arrows three on two if they hurry. Jungle shoots it off the board. St. Lot the rebound. All the way up to the promenade. Hey, if that guy can get it all the way back on the field, he's got a great arm. Nope. Ought to sign him up for the Cardinals here in St. Louis. Ron St. Lot with the missed shot. St. Lot with two important goals in their 5-3 victory over St. Louis in game number two. And the pass to set up Steve Jungle to win it in overtime on Friday night. At halftime of game three here, the Steamers led 4-3. Right now, they lead 2-0. Robin takes it around six, and he does. He is sent to the turf. No foul is called. Gomez is pushed from behind by Lane. Gomez coming in, coming in. And Lane is there to take it away. Lane getting a little physical here as we wind down the first half. Here's Lane to the red line, pulling it away from Gomez. The speedy little Jeff Cacciatore. Inside for Gravin. Cacciatore couldn't get the shot away. Steal by Razzabak. Redmond Lane keeps the steamer hopes alive. Now Tuchel along the near boards for San Rossi. Break for New York, two on one. Jungle left, Gomez right. Bad pass by Gomez, cut away by Bick. Actually a great play by Sammy Bick, you're right, Al. It was a bad pass, but Bick did the only thing he could. He tried to go between the two players. Rossi gets around Lane at center. Glavin is there. Karassi almost took it back. Tony Glavin for the steamer. Three on three across the red line. Left side catch a Tory on Tuchel. Hooked away by the Arrows' top defender. Karasi has come out. And New York moves up. 
Taken back by Sammy Bethesda. Leaders have a play. A shot and falls down. 140 left to go in the first half. The traffic comes up. Razovac stays up. And now Karasi with a team from the Big Apple. Glavin now trying to get off. Tremendous effort by Tony Glavin for St. Louis. Here's Jungle for Karasi. Back for the captain of the arrow. Val Tuchka. The drive off the glass and just into the crowd with 116 left in the half. But the top defender in the MISL walks off. And we've seen why tonight tremendous defensive skills, but he can attack as well. And in fact, he enjoys attacking. Only twice in the four-year history of the New York Arrows have they been shut out in the first half. One of those was against New York, was against the St. Louis team. Steamers give it right away. Jungle, and he sends one into the crowd. And the crowd appreciating every mistake that Steve <laughs> Jungle makes. Well, remember, St. Louis shut him out for almost three quarters Friday night. And as Al told you, came back two goals in seven seconds and also the game winner. Arrows back in their third. Razovac running away from the one angles went over for Ben Karasi. Back for Razovac. Arrows coming in. Razovac for Gomez in front. Kicked away by Ilyescu. 49 seconds left in the half. The Arrows have shown signs of playing a little bit better. But as of yet, no goals for them. Petra coming in. Flavio is there. And Petra high off the glass in the corner. Dio loses it. Jungle bangs into Greg Villa. Villa comes away with it. Greg Villa coming in. Cuts the center. Cleared by Fernando Flavio. Jungle with San Carasi and Omar Gomez. It's three on three as New York moves in with 13 seconds left in the half. Gomez looks behind him for Jungle in the corner with eight. Jungle battling with Bellinger. He tries to clear and comes out with three, two, one, and that will do it. Standing ovation for the Steelers here at the second home. 30 minutes gone by, another half yet to come. Two to nothing, the Steamers lead. We'll be back with our halftime activities in just a moment. Kodak announces a whole new way to make pictures. Introducing disc photography. The beginning is this, a unique film disc, a slice of technology so thin there's room in the camera for an array of precision electronics. The new Kodak Disc Camera. Watching game four of the 1982 MISL Championship live on the USA Network. We are at halftime at the Checker Dome, and the St. Louis Steamers lead the New York Arrows by a score of two to nothing. The question is, Kyle, is that enough of a lead? Well, if we look at Friday night as a comparison, well, we remember that St. Louis was ahead at one point in the first half, four to one. They had a three-goal margin, obviously. Then the silly foul to Steve Petcher that allowed New York to get two man advantage goals to come back and let the halftime score be four to three. Tonight, St. Louis has not made that mental mistake. They have not been foolish. They have not made too many silly fouls, though the game is very physical, and referee Bill Maxwell is letting a lot go on. So St. Louis is in a much better position than they were Friday night, and I certainly their confidence has got to be drastically improved, particularly after the way they lost the game Friday. Over the past MISL season, I've met a lot of people, and I've made some friends. One of the friends is sitting right next to me right now, Kyle Rowe, Jr., and interestingly enough, we put a piece together, and if you can't poke fun at your friends, who can you poke fun at? This is the story of Kyle Rhodes, Jr., born in 1950 in Dallas.
Kyle, I have to ask you one thing. That, uh, that, that little routine you did at the end there, is that how you uh, keep your legs in shape? Folks, don't adjust your television sets. The redness on my face is there's nothing wrong with your set. I don't know how you... That's what they told me they were going to go have lunch this afternoon. They go and fix this thing up together. That, I'm very honored, but a little bit embarrassed. You made me do that on the field. That's a little Three Stooges routine that people who are old Three Stooges fans remember how Curly used to go around and around like that. And we were reliving some of our uh, juvenile days, and it's obvious that some of those are still left in my life. You know, you can't keep from getting older, but you can always remain immature. And I have done that tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. Did we stir up a few memories for you? Some great memories, particularly the old golf club and baseball. I never remember that Scottish kilt, but I guess the way Tony Glavin plays, uh, maybe we can say that that was in honor of him. Was it true you wanted the Dallas Tornado to play in that Scottish kilt? No, no, no. It, did you write all that yourself? Did you have one of Johnny Carson's gag writers come in and do that? I'm not telling, because I don't want to take the blame for any of them. <laughs> it was great. Thank you, Gary Dubin and Mark Payton, our producer and director, and uh, see you, Al. We've had a great, successful third year here in the Major Indoor Soccer League, and I've uh, really enjoyed working with you this year. We only do it because we like it. Okay. We're at halftime here at the Checker Dome in St. Louis. The St. Louis Steamers lead the New York Arrows 2 to nothing. First half highlights are coming up. Stay with us. Toyota presents a truck that gives you the feeling. The feeling that you finally found a truck hungry for work. The Toyota diesel with a dual... ...to Memorial. ...in champion as we move back into the realm of seriousness here in St. Louis. Al Troutwick along with Kyle Rowe Jr. and the steamers lead two to nothing and let's take a look at some of the highlights of the first half here are some of the saves of Slobo Ilyevsky in the corner Bronx St. Law with the shot between the legs of Sammy Bick and he did he look calm there and here's the goal of Petcher Petcher his first shot hit off the glass Kitson trying to play the ball back to Zoltan Toth now here's Tony Glavin turns it inside the rocket shot the pocket rocket puts it in the pocket inside the net and St. Louis takes the two nothing lead here's Roger Beck to the corner, Gomez with the shot and a kick save that time by Ilyevsky. Tremendous saves and four saves in the first half. 14 for Ilyevsky, 15 for Zoltan So The shots just as equal, 25 for New York and 24 for St. Louis. Tonight is game four, and if the steamers win, there will be a game five. And you can see it right here on the USA Cable Network, coast to coast. Beginning at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Wednesday, from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, where they already have a Stanley Cup for the third straight year. They're looking to make it four straight MISL championship, as we'll continue our coverage right through the end. Kyle, I think this game has a tremendously different complexion than Game 3 did. It certainly does, the intensity of St. Louis, but also we have to remember that New York always knows that they can always come back. Jungle has done it so many times against St. Louis, let alone against the rest of the league, that they're never out of it. And uh, they could get behind 6 7 nothing, and anything could happen. Well, the checker dome has filled up once again. The people are returning to their seats. We're getting set for the start of the second half. Stay with us. We're coming back for more MISL Soccer on USA. Hi, I'm Warner Ross. Not very pleased with the world and the way things are going. Ben Karasi right behind him and the, the police escort. We prepare for the start of the third quarter. And the stats are spelled out like this. Shots for New York, 25. For St. Louis, 24. Saved for Zoltan Tolt for New York, 15. And for Slobo Ilyevsky, 14. As we look at Hungarian goalkeeper Zoltan Tolt and a late arriving Slobo Ilyevsky to the cheers of the Checkerdome crowd. It's a slight limp in his walk, and you wonder if he was getting some extra special treatment during halftime. Tonight's kind of off the cuff, Al, and we've had a lawsuit in the Major Indoor Soccer League this year that you read something about. Adrian Brooks, the Denver Avalanche star player, MVP of the All-Star Game last year, suing a writer in Denver for, I guess, defamation of character and some other things. 
Be interesting to see what happens with that. Brooks set out the playoffs for Denver, and they lost to these St. Louis Steamers who move into the New York zone. They go! Wait a minute. No, oh, no. no. Not even can't believe it. And wait for the booze. Bill Maxwell blew his whistle. St. Louis won an advantage situation. There's the foul. Maxwell had already blown the whistle before Ebert kicked the ball into the net. St. Louis is going to be really upset on that one because the pass was already away. And there's a look at Don Ebert. And I'm sure I can't repeat what Al Prost is saying. Well, the referee as the penalty box attended clears off the field. 14:42 left to go in the third quarter. Range beginning to the second half. Loose in front, and Colt was there again. New York trails by two. They have not scored yet in the game. Foul on New York. Clavijo knocks down Greg Villa. All that St. Louis did in the first half was shut out the most potent offense in the major indoor soccer league, New York. Here's again the first touch on the ball to Villa. Demers will restart with a free kick. Baikio goes to the corner. Fernando Clavillo can't get it away from Greg Villa. And out to the red line for Baikio. Baikio being pressured by Gazzola. He goes all the way back for Slobo Ilieski. lost it into the crowd. Kick in for New York. Actually, that was a pretty safe thing to do. <laughs> well, the official's catching the ball, but uh, he had no place to pass, and he certainly did not want to pass to a defender in his own zone with no one in the goal. And the ball winds back on the foot of Slobo Ilyevsky. A slow, safe start for the St. Louis Steamers. They give it away. Gomez with jungle in front. Unbelievable. He got tangled up and missed. That patented team jungle goal was stopped as he fell down. Jungle's going to go off the field as well. Here's Greg Villa. The pass kicked back out. And there you see the miss. Fortunately, Bellinger coming in. Our jungle may have had a second chance, and now back at live action, we got two on one. Liberate saved by Slobo. Liberate's had a good shot. Now Gazonis is in front, headed away and cleared by Steve Petra. Pressure by the New York Arrows. And a steamer kick in is coming up. You would think with the style of refereeing that we have tonight, Maxwell and Popovich allowing the game to kind of get physical, but that would be to St. Louis's advantage. But remember, if there's a team in the league that can be as physical as St. Louis can, it's got to be New York, and as we said Friday night, they're going to be much more deceptive about their physical play. Well, the call goes against St. Louis in a change, and New York gets the free kick. The Arrows making a couple of changes. Omar Gomez checks out. And unfortunately for Mark Liveritt, he does not have a strong right foot or he would have scored on that last time up the field. Filiepsky tries to get it out for Glavin. Glavin volleys one up. Gibson is there at the red line. Cacciatore heads it back to Paul Rowe. And the Seamers come out of their zone. Sammy Bick. Slides one through intended for Cacciatore. Turned back by Paul Gibson. Cacciatore gives it another go. St. Lot muscling with Bick in the corner. And a foul called by Anatole Popovich, the alternate, back to the midfield line. Bick for pushing. Sammy Bick in front, St. Lot. Acknowledged that nothing was meant between the two. 
both of whom played on the U.S. national team together all for a few games. Mark Liberich. Liberich to the red line for Paul Kispin. Teamers are back strongly on defense. Juan Carlos Batia around the corner, pulling it back and losing it to the court. St. Lot keeps it alive for New York. Here's number 17, Franz St. Lot, spinning back for Liverich on the left side. Liverich took a bad shot. Julievsky out for Carl Rose. To the midfield line for Greg Villa. Villa into the New York zone, lost the handle, throws down Matias, and there will be a foul against Greg Villa. Good call, Greg Villa saying, shaking his head, yes, there was. It's a score, 2 nothing for St. Louis. We'll be back in just a moment with more MISL soccer right here on USA. John D'Angelo has been watching his neighborhood change from the kind of place you'd want to raise a family to a dangerous crime-infested battlefield. Bella! We have got to move. Nobody makes me move. Now playing. Check local newspapers for a theater near you. New York trying to score their first goal of the game. They've been denied so far by Slobo Ilievsky and the defense of St. Louis. Ron St. Lot at the midfield line. Moves into the steamer zone. Steps on the brakes and crosses it over for Strenister. Liverich left side. Can't get away from Ty Keel. After a breaking Greg Villa who could not control. The Steamers have gone back to their strategy of games one and two where they played a tight defensive game. The result was a low-scoring affair. Here's Paul Kitson. The shot to the chest of Ilievsky. Alfred Sheila. Deliverance. And now Karasi. Arrows give it away. Lavin. And Karasi moves up with Villa on the right. Finish the back. Right to the left. Tony Kept alive by Villa. Off the board here's Bellinger. Morafi is there for New York. Out for Paul Kitson. Can't get around Steve Petrick. Kitson looking as his right angle was shot. Tackled by Strenister, but Glavin maintains control. Pushed away, and now it's New York again. Kitson at the midfield line runs into Bellinger. Foul against Tony Bellinger. Kitson is pretty hot about it. Kitson trying to run a uh, little fake play, let the ball go between his legs and run on, turned around and got the forearm shiver from Tony Bellinger with the cast. And despite the cries of the St. Louis Beamer fans, it certainly was a foul on Bellinger. Steve Jungle boys at the bench ready to roll back on. And he is waiting for one of the New York forwards to check off. Actually, there are only four players on, so he can go on the field any time. The arrow sent Val Tuchin. Jungle remains on the bench. Another whistle. Another call Popovic against St. Louis. The alternate referee has been very involved in the action in this game. Dan Karasi starts things for New York on the free kick. In front, and... Cleared by Bellinger. Karasi for the arrows. Back for Gene Strenison. Laval Tuchuk. Falling down is Cacciatore. Seamers come up with it. All and all is John Ebert. Ebert coming in. Saved by Zoltan Tolk. Ebert was all alone and Tolk came up with a very big save. Arrows break out. Ebert tries to slip him through again. Very dangerous for St. Louis. They're just flying all over the field. It looks like a Chinese fire drill, this defense. And they're making a lot of steals, but it's extremely dangerous. Six there by Coach and cleared by Strenister. Leverage is off and Jungle is back on as the Seamers have had a couple of great opportunities in the last few seconds. Petrick for Strenlau, saved by Coach with a little help from Team Strenister. Arrows break out of their zone. Gibson left. 
Karasi at center. Jungle on the right. Here comes Jungle. Back for Karasi. Five. Jungle the header. And handball. Handball on Jungle. Two-minute penalty. I don't believe it. I would not agree with that call. Jungle's going to get two minutes for intentional handball. As the ball went off the top of the glass, he was unable to get his head to it. He tried to fist it into the goal. And the first penalty of the night for New York for their leading scorer and captain. Well, this one is tough to believe. Now, this is what the reason he's getting two minutes, though, is because it's an intentional handball very similar to the call of a goalkeeper when he comes out of the penalty area. It's almost an automatic. But with the game being freed up tonight so much by the referees, it still is a bit surprising. Well, it turns out to be an advantageous situation for St. Louis. Their first man advantage of the game. Greg Villa for Don Evert. Outside for Ty Keogh. Here's the change. Keogh replacing Stremlau as the quarterback. Shot saved by Tulsa, went wide. Another shot that just missed. Another shot that's loose and cleared by Macias. Into the New York bench. Frantic moments in the New York race. Keep in mind that New York is a great short-handed team. Seamer started up again. 1.33 left to go in their man advantage. It is very loud right now in the second row. Keo for Villa. Out for Ebert. For Depp send over. Saved by Zoltan Toll. Val Tuchin comes out of the zone for Paul Kitson. Arrows trying to come free. They're always going to call. Anytime two defenders get against one attacker against the board, the call will always go against the two. And again, it's, it's made this time. 1-1-1. One, one, one. Left to go in the... Steamer man advantage. New York killing time. This is Val Tuchin. Sliding one along the board. Now Ty Keo resets things for the Steamer. And up they come. Keo with Villa right. Far side is send over. Ty Keo for Villa. Right marking by New York. Gibson forces a mistake. Keo tries again with 44 in the man advantage. Send over it. Back at center for Keo. The drive. Go! a low shot and a foul now as we get back to live action against New York St. Louis Steamers up by three now Carl Rose breaks into the New York zone around the boards no one there for the rebound Loud in the drive just this head of goal Carl Rose 
as they play volleyball over Zoltan Toth. Here's another look again. Here's the shot that goes high. It comes back over Toth's head, goes back over Toth's head, underneath the bar. Paul Rose from Tony Glavin and St. Louis up 4-0. And the Steamers look very strong right now, shutting out the Eastern Division champion. 8.08 the time. 26 seconds between goals. Seventh of the playoffs for Rose. Tony Glavin got the assist. Holding call against the Steamers. And they're starting to climb the boards here. Look at the fans down there. <laughs> they better pull him back. He's wearing a St. Louis Steamer jersey. Jungle starts things off for Gomez. Back in front, clear. Rajavak on the left side. Off the board, Jungle tried and missed, and it's cleared by Petra. Clavillo, the shot deflected by Gazonis. Cleared by Petra. That'll be dangerous play. Redmond Lane gets kicked in the face. Off the attempted overhead volley. Here's how it happened. The ball bouncing. They both missed the header. Lane comes in to try to head it. Gets kicked on top. And now back at live action, St. Louis under control with Keel on the ball. Now those two were teammates in the American Soccer League. So there's no bad blood there. I know for a fact they're both very friendly. On we go. 5.47 left to go in the third. Tony Bellinger with the Steamers on top. Four to nothing. Here's Redmond Lane. Boy, a little four corner here by St. Louis. And the Steamers are not looking towards the net. Gomez spins it around. Arrows move up. Gomez still with the ball. Gomez at center. For Jungle. Yep, he was right there. The Steamers are being very cautious about their play up the field. That is not a very good strategy against New York. Razzavac, back for Gomez. For Jungle. On Bellinger. Jungle coming in, the one-two. Knocked away by Bellinger. Glavin overlapping. He, Gomez is gonna get two minutes. He's gotta get two minutes. He came off and hit Tony Bellinger from behind. As Bellinger in an altercation. Now things getting a little rough. The arrows feeling the pressure. And as stupid as Steve Petra's penalties might have been in game three, these are just as stupid. was that Tony Bellinger and Steve Jungle got tied up on the latest New York Arrow attack. As they both fell to the ground, they collided with one another. Gomez came over, and as Bellinger tried to get up, pushed him back down, and both referees happened to see it, so there's no question about the call. It's just now a question of whether there will be an additional two minutes on Gomez. So as the organist just said through his fingers, dum de dum dum now we're going to get both captains coming over, and Popovich and Maxwell are going to... Well, while we get Maxwell settles it up, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with more after this word from your local cable system. Captains have been called over by Bill Maxwell, Steve Jungle, and Steve Petra. That two bench, two bench penalty. The one for me, Steve, two bench penalty. Got it. Got two, two bench penalties being called because players came off bench penalties for to enjoy the fracas. Come as coach was for the what was it? The charging. Charging. Oh charging. Oh, charging. Steve Jungle spinning, whirling, trying to figure out what New York is going to do now. When 
Casey, what has happened is that both teams have been assessed a bench penalty in addition to the penalty to Gomez. So New York will be two men down. St. Louis will be one man down. And New York has yet to put a fourth player, or not a second player, in the penalty box. The bench penalty is the result of players from both teams coming out to try to break up or join in the fight. You be the judge. And there's the St. Louis steamer box as Jeff Cacciatore is in the box for St. Louis. Billy Gazzone is now going in the box for New York. It will still be a man advantage situation for St. Louis with the penalty to Gomez. It will be a day to be remembered for Bill Maxwell, the referee. The bottom line is the Arrows will be down a man for a maximum of two minutes. will go with three defenders, Paul Kipson, Steve Grinister, and Renato Chila. And up comes Ray Lewis. This could be the turning point. Miller. Goodbye, Gio. Loses for Chila. Now for Kipson. And cleared where Gio rescues it at the midfield line. 140 in all the penalties. Coincidental bench penalties. And one against Omar Gomez. By Keel. For Villa, the drive high off the glass. Here's Ty Keel. Back for Villa. Keel again. 118 in the penalty. Villa. Back for Keel. The drive saved by Toast. Save again off Eber. And he gets it out for Renato Chila. Sheila running up ahead of the play. Renato Sheila trying to get through. He does. Sheila. That last touch. And Sheila comes away limping. Fortunately, Don Ebert came back for St. Louis as Keel was beaten by Chilla. Greg Villa will give it another go with Ty Keel at center. 45 seconds in the penalty. Villa in front. Goal! the leading goal scorer in the playoffs for St. Louis with goal number seven, and this one being goal number eight, the deflection, picture perfect ice hockey style. Here's another look as Villa throws it outside the penalty area. And with that, the Gomez penalty is up. We'll be back, but we'll still have the two bench penalties, so it'll be four players against four on the field. Omar Gomez across the line for Tupcha on the right side. He is knocked down by Greg Villa. Three kick for York. That goal by Rose is eighth of the playoffs for Villa at 11:26. A man advantage goal that gives the Steamers a five to nothing lead. Now Tupcha, here's how it happened in the corner with Greg Villa. Tupcha who's had so many problems with uh, injuries during this playoff. He's played every game. That slide, Jungle missed on another shot. Sammy Vick overlapping for the Steamers. Coming in, the drive blocked to the corner by Matias. Villa's in the slot. Gets it out for Ebert. Back for Vick. The shot, just missed. Ebert is sent to the board. Foul against New York, and Ebert looks to be in a lot of pain. That Ebert has injured that elbow just one more time. He had it under ice for two hours before the game. Very much tendonitis kind of situation, and every time he gets jarred, it's robbed with pain. But New York has a player down as well, Juan Carlos Machia. Perhaps this is uh, what they call a coaching tactic. I don't know. I didn't see Machia get bumped. But, for, but for perhaps Popovich wants to just 
get the crowd quieted down. There's a little hip check by Gomez. And there's the elbow taking the run of the ball for Don Ebert. Well, that penalty didn't intimidate Gomez at all. He continues to go right into the board, going after the ball. See the shin pad exposed on the right leg of Juan Carlos Matia. And he looks like he'll be okay. Bobby Baldwin, Arrows trainer. Providing a little ethyl chloride magic. With three minutes and four seconds left to go in the third quarter, this game is a total surprise to me. At least up on the scoreboard. Five to nothing, the St. Louis Steamers lead. They have provided an admirable effort. Larry Holzer. Deep into the corner, here's Tony Glavin. Both teams are back at full strength. Mathia weaving around. Holzer staying with him. Billy Gazonis races to the corner. Catatory out over Tony Glavin. Glavin coming in. Holzer coming in. Cleared by Tolt. Petra is there. Stolen away by Gomez. But he's beaten to the ball by Bellinger. The loose ball will be handled easily by Slobo Olyevsky. And look at this. Gomez almost capitalized. Here's Karasi coming in. Karasi, the shot. Incredible. Every part of his body makes the save. And now St. Louis 3-0-2. Petra coming in. Kicked over the glass by Zoltan Toll. Well, remember, it was 5-0 in last year's semifinals. St. Louis behind Wichita. And they were able to come back. Here you see Karashi's magic trying to put the ball between the legs. And I've got to think he perhaps mishit it. And the crowd has not given up at all. Two minutes and nine seconds left to go in a long third quarter. Especially long for New York. Johnny Stremlau for Holzer just missed. Jungle steal. Here he comes on Slobo. The shot. Goal, New York. Steve Jungle gets New York one back. I'll tell you, not even the St. Louis players do not like him, but everybody has respect for him. The man never gives up. As he had made the steal off of Sammy Bick, Bick unable to chase him down. And there's the curving shot. Ilyevsky was in perfect position. Here's another look again. Not a really great angle to shoot from. 20th of the playoff for Steve Jungle. Unassisted at 13.01. Ball rolls for the steamer. Colt makes the save. Out for Stan Karasi. For Steve Jungle again. Jungle in the corner with Bick marking him. Jungle looks outside. He's got Karasi, left point Rashevac. Clevijo. This game is well within reach of New York with the amount of time remaining. Foul against the Steamers, John Hayes, free kick arrow. As we told you in an earlier game, when you have a player like Jungle who this year scored three goals in 37 seconds, anything's possible. Gomez for Jungle, lays it off. Karasi was winding, and Keel knocked it away. Gomez for Jungle. And Karasi sent that one way high into the crowd. Looks the frustration for Karasi from Steve Jungle. They're yelling at each other, but... Uh, they'll continue to work together to succeed. Ilyevsky has a goal kick. One minute, 12 seconds left to go in the third quarter. The fourth quarter is going to be something. Ilyevsky gives it away, launching one into the New York bench. Remember, St. Louis has done an awful lot of running this game. Spending a tremendous amount of energy, and New York with their skill would really wipe them out if they just hold on to the ball. Rossi heads it down, Flavio, right side for Gomez. 
This passing wizard has not been a big factor in the game so far. Gomez, Clavijo, in front, it's blocked. Back outside, Karasi. For Jungle, loose in the air. Gomez couldn't get to it. Ilyevsky is way out. A battle for the ball. Now Petra goes at Gomez. This dangerous play. Team Jungle has done a very stupid thing. I don't think either referee saw it, though. Petra playing for two years together in Dallas. Former teammates of Bill Maxwell and Popovich will retire to the referee circle to straighten this whole thing out. Now let's see if we can listen up as the referees get to our microphone on the far side. Fans 
Hawks are planning for their return to the bench. As Maxwell confers with the security police. Al Trost is now on the Arrows bench, pleading with the fans. And now leads away. Al Trost was just over there screaming at the fans them to remain sane behind the New York bench. Well, with the intensity with which these teams battle each other, and with the emotion that is brought on with a crowd of over 18,000 as loud as these fans are, it was almost a matter of time before this happened. You wish it never does, but it does. Well, it couldn't have happened in the first couple of years of the league because no one was the class of the New York Arrows. But this year, they've had all the fight they needed and more. Now, just to reassess real quickly, Gomez and Jungle in the penalty box for New York. Petra in the penalty box for St. Louis. St. Louis with a one-man advantage, four field players to three. And in a similar situation, earlier in the third quarter, Carl Rose scored his eighth goal, power play goal, with Gomez and two bench penalties having been called. Well, back to the game. 40 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Demons with the man advantage. They lead by four, five to one. Kicked out by Cole. How difficult it must be to maintain your, your game concentration after an incident such as that. By Keel for Greg Villa with 22 seconds left. Keel back for Villa. The drive. Into the seat. That same situation is open though again. Paul Rose. But right outside the goalkeeper's crease, and Villa is drawing the defender to try to block the shot. Rose will be open again for the one-touch deflection. Greg Villa intercepts at the midfield line. Fortunately, we've got some fans going at it. That quickly subsides. Ty Keel with seven seconds for Rose. Out for Villa. Saved by Cole. Big slap save by Zoltan Tolk. He punched it over the glass. Replay again. Oh, you'll get a great angle here. Here comes Greg Villa. Powerful shot, and Tolk punching the ball wide acrobatically. Shot on goal. More great pictures being supplied by our crew here. Villa for Ebert to the corner where no one is, and the buzzer sounds here at the Checker Dome in St. Louis. So everybody can take a deep breath as we hope you will too. At the end of three, with one more to go, it is the St. Louis Steamers five, and the New York Arrows one. An amazing four about for the NABF Junior Lightweight Championship between the undefeated Hector Camacho and veteran Refugio Rojas. Be with us for all the blow-by-blow -blow action of professional boxing at 8.30 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, right here on the USA Cable Network. St. Louis Steamers entered game four on the brink of elimination. And now, with one quarter to go, they are on the verge of sending it to game five. Well, certainly the third quarter answered a lot of questions. Number one, St. Louis was not going to rest on a 2 nothing lead that they took in the half. They added three more, including two power play goals, something unusual for St. Louis. Here's the Carl Rose goal, number eight, as he deflects this shot and pass from Greg Villa. That was goal number five. And here's Jungle's lone goal. This is the other question that was answered. Ilyevsky will not have a shutout tonight. And Jungle continues his 13-game scoring streak against the St. Louis Steamers. Back live, just underway in the fourth quarter. Two-minute penalty against Greg Villa. And I never saw a guy take off with a penalty box so fast. He actually ran over there. No comments, no questions. Boom, he was gone. That's the way, really, people should deal with authority, frankly, and I'm glad to see Greg do that. Well, what that does is set the stage for a New York man advantage for a minute three in 57 seconds. So teams are even up, three aside. We've got all kinds of room out there now. New York goes with Machia, Sheila, and Kitson. And here's Juan Carlos Machia. He comes in for 
Renato Chila on the right side. John Eber leads the St. Louis attack. Chila comes over to try and slow his progress. Eber stays there, spinning away. Eber still with the ball. 30 seconds left to go in the penalty. Carl Rose dropped by the goal. Carlos Mejia's back pass almost went between the legs. That happened to St. Louis earlier this year. That's Carl Rose. Rose coming in. Just wide. And he hits it over the glass. A very... What a great play as Rose played the ball to himself. There's the missed pass by Mejia. Carl Rose will move in. He'll draw the goalkeeper out. He'll play it off the wall. Comes right back. And fortunately for New York, Renato Chilla came through. type of series Rod Sterling would have just enjoyed thoroughly. And the arrows come up to the midfield line. Paul Kipson. Kipson with Strenister on his left. Touch the center. The shot just missed. New York is not working very well, and I'm surprised with three on three and lots of room. Steve Jungle is not out. Oh, Jungle is in the box. Pardon me. Now he's on. Kipson in front. Frantically trying to reach control. This is Redmond Lane. He goes around Sheila. Maintains his footing. But has no support and goes back out for Tony Bellinger. Power play now for New York for the next 33 seconds. We're a minute 45 into the fourth and final quarter. Now Kipson goes at it with Bellinger. Redmond Lane, who was also a former teammate of Kitson, comes over to calm him down. Well, who's the front protagonist? It's Omar Gomez again. Well, Bellinger and Kitson shake hands and make up for the time being. And the Steamers have the ball. 27 seconds left, and now 24 in the penalty. Bill Maxwell is going to need a new whistle by the time this game is over. The one he's got is undoubtedly wearing out. We have 13.09 left to go in the fourth quarter of regulation time. Game five, Wednesday night for the Nassau Coliseum. Harold's give it away. Tony Bellinger. Coming in. Not really thinking of shooting, and he gives it away to New York. Strenister. For Jungle. Jungle across the red line. Jungle coming in for Gomez. For Kipson. For Jungle. He couldn't put it in. Greg Villa's out of the box. Both teams are at even strength. And the Steamers almost capitalized on Villa coming out of the box. Here's Gomez again. Kipson right through the box. Arrows obviously pressing. Greg Villa's got great speed. Here comes Villa. On Tipsha, he pokes it away. Out for Cacciatore. The drive saved by Zoltan Tolf. He's come up with some big ones. Late in the third and here in the fourth. Arrows up on a break. Jungle shooting it wide. Gomez back for Jungle. The shot just missed and hit the post. Gomez the shot. And Glavin corrals the rebound. Tipsha takes it away. Foul St. Louis. Tucha, the crafty veteran, looks up into the crowd saying, hey, he did kick me. 11.56 left to go in the fourth. Steamers lead 5-1. to one. Dan Karasi outside for Gene Strenister. Jungle deep into the corner. Sammy Bick marking him. Out for Gomez, now Strenister. Back for Gomez. Gomez fires. Go, New York! Gomez turned his body like he was going to the right, hit it left low. We've now got two in a row by New York. Look again, St. Louis is very tight, man-to-man -man marking. And now the St. Louis Steamer fans on their feet again. Here's the pass inside from Strenager. Gomez will turn the ball, hold it. He'll turn, pulls it back to the near post. 
And he just caught Ilyevsky going the wrong way. This will be a great look here. Put it between Petra's legs. It is now 5-2, to two, the 11th goal of the playoff for Omar Gomez, assisted by Strenisler at 321. Is it possible? We shall see. Tukcha getting around Larry Holzer, plays it ahead for Gomez, back for Tukcha. The Arrows have been very dominant so far on this fourth quarter, controlling the ball. Jungle along the boards with Vick, cleared by Rose, intercepted by Tukcha. Tukcha comes in. Kucha still with the ball. Wins it in the corner. Can't get it away from Tony Glavitt. And a foul holding against Val Kucha. They get one quick foul. This is going to be really interesting. Val Kucha back for Mike Rashevac. The way New York has been successful here in the second home, it's almost a matter of expecting it to happen. Gomez played the ball and Glavin stole it. Tackle by Razovac. On a fine defensive play, Mike Razovac shut down Tony Glavin. And now New York has the ball. Omar Gomez across the midfield line. Left side, Stan Karasik. Out for Gomez. Poked away by Pushing foul against Clavillo. Okay. It'll be a pushing foul, yes. He has tremendous speed, though. Rose is sent for a loop. And the arrows come out again. Steve Jungle with kicks in ahead of the field. But Jungle will keep it. And now laying it off for Clavillo. For Razovac, 10.05, left to go in the fourth quarter. Razovac shoots, and a save by Ilyevsky. Razovac, not an exceptionally sharp shooter. Sammy Bick coming in, coming in. For Ebert, high off the glass. Gibson, for Ebert in the corner. Saved by Colt as it was going across the goal line. Oh, my. That's twice in the game that Colt has done that. Here comes Ebert again. Back for Villa, behind Greg. Villa taken away by Razovac. Take a look at that last save as Ebert played the ball. Holster was right there. And Cole stretched out his full six foot three inch frame to make the save. That drive, Mattia gives it away with 9.17 left to go in the fourth quarter. The Steamers five, the Arrows two. The Steamers trying to even this series, which the Arrows lead two games to one. It's all for the 1982 MISL Championship. Machia into the St. Louis zone, firing. Jungle tried to flick it in. Rose for Villa, 8.50, 8.49. Cheers from the Steamer fans. They've been cheering loud and long throughout the night. Petra. Blocked by Sheila. Arrows come out and four. Sheila across the red line. Still coming in. The shot. Loose down low. Jungle keeps it alive. St. Louis having trouble getting fresh players on the field. Players are coming to the bench and players are not wanting to come over the board. Steve Petra for Tony Glavitt. For Redmond Lane. Her again. Now Redmond Lane working for some space. Veers away from Sheila. Loose outside. Slim Lau for Glavin. It was an agonizing roll that Glavin had to watch roll by. Ball hits in for New York. Weaves at center. For Jungle left side. Jungle taking and giving it away. Job of marking up man to man. Lavin breaks free to the corner. Off the glass. Watch St. Lot. On the opposite side. A play by St. Lot. Lifted over the head of Redmond Lane. Now St. Lot. 
Tackled by Lane. He breaks free. Steele is the only one back. Here comes Lane. Go! Shot is blocked. St. Lot is sent to the turf. Two minute penalty against St. Louis. It was a big mistake by Franz St. Lot that gave the ball away to Redmond Lane. Well, Ty Kill here making a tackle, both legs going down, indicative of his hustle here in the final series. And you'd much prefer to have penalties called on your players for effort penalties rather than for mental penalties. Here's an effort one as he goes down and catches Ron St. Lot. The first game was 3-2 overtime St. Louis. The second game was 5-3 New York. And the third game was 9-8 overtime New York. And here we are, 6-2, St. Louis. And the steamer defense has been brilliant. Here comes Lane again, but he can't get around Val Tuchcha. New York free kick, they do it quickly. Too quickly, they'll do it again. And Karasli, 6-16 left to go. Gomez slapped over the glass by Ilyevsky. Gomez so many times earlier in that situation would play the ball inside the crease out of frustration. He blasted it. One thirty-four left to go in the New York man advantage. Gomez stopped in front by Petrus. Cleared by Redmond Lane. Now to across the turf. Dan Karasi with Jungle on the bench. Two trips, Karasi, liberate. Shot is blocked. Out for Karasi. Liberate for Gomez. For Karasi, Gomez. with a backhand for Val Tipcher. That looks pretty interesting. Tipcher the drive. Kitson couldn't deflect it. Liveridge couldn't put it in. 40 seconds in the man advantage. Gomez. Tipcher. Locked out by Redmond Lane. Frustrating moments for the defending champion. Val being caught against St. Louis. 501 left to go in the fourth. We'll be back with more MISL soccer after this word from your local cable system. Gomez 
is in the corner for Kitson in front, and a great save by Ilyevsky. Ten seconds left in the New York man advantage. And again, the story of this game being displayed for us by the St. Louis team in defense. Both teams are at even strength. And a kick in New York is coming up, and listen to this crowd. Eighteen thousand one hundred and sixteen strong standing in applause as the St. Louis Steamer penalty killing unit has done its job. The Ty Keo penalty for tripping has now expired. And the Steamers maintain their 6-2 margin with just 434 left in this ballgame. Well, the Steamers have found that that defensive strategy against New York seems to work and work well. Ilyevsky out. 4.25 left to go. Two-minute penalty against Paul Kitson of New York. And now the Steamers will have a man advantage. And this crowd is absolutely delirious. <laughs> Tripping is the call against Paul Kinson. <laughs> and it will be a steamer man advantage now. Al Throat on the verge of beating New York at the checkered home for the very first time. And he couldn't have picked a better time to have his team do it. He almost gives it away. New York trying to kill some time. They're down a man, but they are a fine, short-handed team. Foul against Greg Billup. Game five, Wednesday night at the Nassau Coliseum, 9 p.m. Eastern time, right here on the USA Cable Network. And it certainly looks as though we will be making that trip. Left side for Gene Strenister. And an uninspired looking Steve Jungle is on the field for New York. Here's Carl Rose breaking back for the steamer. Jungle back defensively. Jungle along the boards. Rose working with him. And a whistle and a two minute penalty against Carl Rose of St. Louis. Someone just threw some beer out of the stand. Well, things continue to stay pretty hot here in the checker dome. A rose will go off, and that will even things off. So both teams will be five aside, and then the arrows will have a 39-second man advantage. Yeah. Here's Carl Rose going with Steve Jungle along the boards. Now Rose is in his offensive zone. Jungle is back defensively, down a man. And it looked pretty harmless compared to some of the other stuff we've seen in this game. But Bill Maxwell has not had a very easy job. 3.38 left to go. Here comes Slavijo for New York. Behind him, Jungle is there and missed, and it's clear. A frightening afternoon for Steve Jungle. Trenister, he missed wide. Bellinger swerving and whirling around in his own zone. The arrow stealing away. Still time for them. Jennifer is sent to the turf. Foul St. Louis. Robin can't believe it. We now have three minutes and 15 seconds left to go. Kyle Rowe Jr. has gone down to field side to give us some impressions of what it might be like down there. Strenister for Karasi stopped by Keel. In 47 seconds, the Arrows will have a brief man advantage. Kitson is still in the box for tripping. Jungle with Bellinger, and that has to be one tired defender, Tony Bellinger. 30 seconds left to go, and the Arrows will then have a man advantage. The time is running out for them. Jungle is tripped, play on. And again, the crowd stands and cheers. Their arch enemy number one is having an awful evening. Ronnie 
Weaver through Tarasi. And another whistle. No nope, play on. Now Tarasi and Don Ebert exchange words. And now play is stopped. And both of them are going to go. This has not been one of your more entertaining indoor soccer games. It's been loud, and there have been a lot of exciting plays, but so many times we've waited for these two teams to be sorted out. Let's see if we can pick it up on the far side. A fan is taunting Paul Kitson and Van Karasi in the penalty box. These fans get involved. That's Phil Maxwell's Scottish accent. There is a security guard in the box. We have two minutes and 31 seconds remaining in game number four of the 1981. Please have you got all the statistics on this? And Steve Petra takes a moment to get the crowd going. He is standing there pointing at the clock, saying, what do you think? And the crowd responds, we love it. Rossi and Don Ebert both go off. It is SRO in the penalty box. Six seconds left to go in the Kitson penalty. The Arrows will then have a man advantage for 39 seconds. And the other two penalties will offset themselves. Jungle breaking in. Vic is the only one back. Here comes Jungle. Shot it wide. Out for Strenister. Here's Clavijo. Shot it off the crossbar. Shot again. Goal, New York. Six to three now with two minutes and 15 seconds left. Well, New York just exploded after that restart. It was Jungle leading the charge, shooting one wide. It came out for Strenister, who alertly found Clavijo. He hit the crossbar, but followed his shot. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the name of the game in indoor soccer. Always expect your shot to come back. And here it did. It wasn't exactly the smoothest way into the net. But the arrows have come within three. For Clavijo, the goal of the playoff for him, number two. Kyle, what is it like down there on the field? You wouldn't believe the sounds, Al. You know, when we're way up high, you can't hear the people knocking into one another. You can't hear the skin and bones against the boards, but it's very real. And of course, from down here, you don't have nearly the angle, so you can't second guess them as much. It looks like a traffic jam in Manhattan at five o'clock. Well, the arrows across the red line again. There's a break for Jeff Capitore. Capitore right side with Sheila and Razovac racing to recover. 1.34 left to go. Here's Redmond Lane. The shot. Save by Cole. Out for Steve Petcher. Both teams are down a man. Petcher across for Sammy Bitt. And Petcher hammers Jungle into the boards. Now Petcher arguing with Don Popovich. Frenister pushes him away. Kyle, how many words can you repeat down there? through our water bottle. I don't know if that's what hit Steve Petra, but something hit Petra in the face. Bill Maxwell, Al, just trying to calm things down for the minute. Not trying to make any decisions, just trying to keep people from getting upset. How was that for a recovery, Kyle? Say that one more time. Steve Petra really recovered very quickly. Now he is being escorted by a teammate over to his bed. And the arrows 
Eagles are having problems with the fans behind their bench again. Here's a replay on an altercation. We go field level. The water being shower. There's the water bottle that hit Petra. And what was seen by Steve Petra, I believe, and I really have to think the way he recovered, was about a 9.7 from the American judges. That was one heck of a dive, and uh, who can blame them? At this point in the game, that would have just... Steve Jungle Al has now come over to shake hands with Petcher. And Petcher is telling, uh, giving a message for Steve to relay to his bench, including Coach Don Popovich. Again, I wish I could repeat it for you, but I don't think since this is family entertainment, it would be appropriate. Billy! A frustrated Steve Jungle back on the bench. He has had many an open shot go wide. And he has had many a shot turned back by Slobo Willievsky. One minute and 23 seconds remain in this fourth quarter. And yes, indeed, I believe there will be a game five on Wednesday night at the Nassau Coliseum in New York. 9 p.m. Eastern time right here on the USA Cable Network. Now we have two penalties uh, still up on the board to Stan Karasi and Don Ebert. 52 seconds remain in them. Meanwhile, Bill Maxwell and Anatole Popovich score things out with another full-time referee, Herb Silver. There it is, a reminder. St. Louis at New York, game five, and indeed the phrase, if necessary, seems no longer needed. The Steamer six and the New York Arrows three. And now Don Popovich talking to Steve Jungle. I imagine now what we're going to have is a bench penalty for New York, and we'll also have Petcher being given a penalty as well. Petcher, if, it is, if he does get a penalty, this will be a yellow card for him in second. Petcher now pointing the finger at Don Popovich. And the look in his eyes said, I'll see you in the tunnel. Hey, you know, we can syndicate this thing and make it uh, Saturday afternoon wrestling. Reminder to our viewers, coast to coast, that the English Channel program scheduled for 10 p.m. Central Time, which is 11 p.m. Eastern, will be seen in its entirety following this game. That's the English Channel, which will undoubtedly be much more peaceful than this setting here in the Checkerdome. That's coming up. After this. I don't know what you want to call it right now. Please announce it. Please announce it. Bill Maxwell saying to the PA announcer to announce what has gone on. I see Steve Petra in the box and no one from New York. Wait. I would imagine someone will be over there shortly. It looks to be Billy Gazonis. There he is. He doesn't look too willing, but he's going anyway. And remember, Al, Don Ebert, and Sam Karasi still in the box. And with only 1.23 left in this game, we'll be playing the final six of this game. Make four it, against it, four. It, 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 it clear to this kid that he didn't throw it. We don't know who threw it. Billy Maxwell saying, make it quite clear to Billy Gazonis that it was not him who they believe threw the water bottle. Maxwell doesn't know who threw it, but somebody did. So it is a bench penalty against New York, which Billy Gazonis will serve. And Steve Petcher, who kind of instigated things when he ran over and challenged Don Popovich ver verbally, is also in the box. One thing I can guarantee you I won't do after the game, and that's recap the penalty. Renato Chila for Kitts and just missed. And this game is not over yet. Six to three with 110 left. Machia for Chila. He comes in with Jungle in front. Here's Chila, the shot to New York. With one minute and three seconds left, the arrows are within two. Team 57 is the time, and what an unlikely goal scorer, Renato Chila. His first goal, his first point of the playoff at 13.57. So two straight goals by New York, and another look 
at the left-footed shot that beats Slobo Ilyevsky to bring the Arrows within one, or no, within two. The penalties will stay up on the board. The teams will be four men aside still on the field. Pretty interesting, huh, Kyle Rowe Jr.? Well, Carl Rose is just reminding his teammates exactly what you, the point you were making. Anything can happen a minute and three seconds. Again, it sounds so redundant and so trite, but one player has scored three goals in 37 seconds, so anything is possible. And New York loves playing here at the Checker Dome as much as any team does. So now we'll just see whether St. Louis decides to maintain possession and try to delay as much time or whether they'll continue to attack. And I'm going to try to see what Altro says to his players. teams are going to stay three aside and that's what Bill Maxwell was explaining that both penalties remain on the board and that no one comes out of the box. Gila trying to get it away from Tony Glavin. Back is Tony Bellinger. The arrows go with Kinson and Steve Jungle. Gila comes up with the ball with 50 seconds left. Steve Jungle left side for Paul Kinson. Kinson coming in. Cuts the center. It is knocked away by Tony Bellinger. 38 seconds left to go. The arrow scrambling for a miracle. Here comes Kinson. He goes to the corner with Vic. And Ilyevsky picks it up. 26 seconds left to go. Weaver trying to sneak in there. Karasi stops that. These teams have gotten one more player each. Penalties are over. Jungle in the corner. Cleared by Bellinger. Out to the head of Glavin. Ten seconds left. It'll be a game five. For the very first time, the Steamers have beaten New York at the second hour. by the fans as they walked off the field. Final score here at the Checker Dome, the St. Louis Steamers 6 and the New York Arrows 4. We'll be back to wrap things up on this crazy night in St. Louis after these messages on USA. Look for Duran, kicked away by Petcher. He'll pick it up. Steve Petcher on the go for Los Angeles, giving it up for Leite inside his own red line. Marcio Leite dropping it back for Michael Collins. Collins approaching the midfield line. St. Louis backing up on him. And talking to Tony Glavin before the game, he said that the strategy would be to put pressure from the laser red line and go after him full pressure, but the lasers didn't really give him a chance to do that. At least not so far in the opening minute. Petcher from midfield off the boards, intercepted Chris Kenny on the go. Steamers playing tonight without Nebo Bandovich re-injured that hamstring. We talked to Kurt Metzger, the Steamers trainer, and he said that Nebo will not be on the trip to the West Coast. Two games in as many nights, starting Tuesday in Los Angeles and then finishing in San Diego. Collins at midfield, brings it in over the attack line in the Steamer zone, cutting to the right side, lays it off for Leite, far boards. Leite pressured by Chris Kenny. Leite still with it. Knocks it back for Topolsky. Adam Topolsky has not had an injury-plagued year. In a corner for Chudin, knocked away. Chudin acquired in the deal for Paul Kitson. Leite acquired even up for Willie Milano, who went to Dallas. Chris White back now to the midfield line to Topolsky. Now we're seeing some of the high pressure. Ball played back to Tim Harris. Coker pressuring him. 13-10 to go, first quarter. The Lasers lead 1-0 over the Steamers. Stuart Lee trying to play it back to Chris White. It comes all the way back to Tim Harris. Harris in his own box, up the middle for Greg Ion, playing in his 131st straight game, looking for Chris White. Poli Garcia coming through and knocking it back for Slovo Ilyevsky. Steamers have had some success with that of late, that high pressure. They've got good team speed, and they can really counter quick once they win the ball. Bain off the boards. He wanted Garcia. He couldn't get the good kick. Now Bellinger kicks it, blocked by a shoot, and it comes back out to the midfield line. Tim Schultz off the boards for Garcia. Bumped by Chris White, Bain takes it, the MetLife Player of the Month for the month of February. Plays it to the right side. 
John Bain on the gallop, right wing, off the boards, open man, Coker, the header saved by Harris. Good save by Tim Harris as Adi Coker made a bid with that header. Nice ball, Coker lays it off right wing. Schultz off the boards. Bain trapping the rebound, a shot, he scores! It's tied, John Bain! It's great ball work right there, great patience by the steamers. We had a chance early on, Adi Coker with a head ball, was blocked, went back, but then they start knocking the ball around and a great pass. Timmy Schultz sending it in off the boards and John Bain trapping it first and then going upstairs on Tim Harris. 2.48 the time of the goal. Bain is 21st of the year from Tim Schultz. Those are the kind you can't miss and he didn't, he buried it. Ball play back now to Tim Harris. That goal incidentally that was scored by the Lasers is their earliest in the game in their history, 19 seconds into it. It is not a league record. Fredrickson strips Collins in the ball. Left foot a shot. Nice save. Harris punched it out to the right. Picked up by Duran. Darrell, 35 feet from goal on the left wing side. Sends it to the corner for Fredrickson. Off the boards, but it's picked off by Leite. Picked up by Redmond Lane. Leite turning to the right. Almost ran into his own play. Now Duran takes it away. Knocked away by Lee Cornwell to midfield. Ebert bumping with Schultz. They both collide. And the foul is going to go on Schultz. First foul on the steamers. Pretty good confrontation down there. Donnie Ebert marked up by Timmy Schultz. There'll be some activity going on before it's over with. That may not be a peaceful afternoon for either one of those guys. Ball is played back to Steve Petcher. Going long off the boards for Ebert. Handball as he trapped that one off the boards. Restart belongs to St. Louis. One foul on the steamers. Nothing for the Lasers. It's a 1-1 tie if you just joined us this afternoon. 11-13 to go in the first quarter. Garcia sending it back to Bain. Neutral zone, Redmond Lane. Right back for Bellinger at the red line of St. Louis. Tony B up the right side for Lane. Red line of L.A. Forced back, leaves it for Bain. Collins on him, back for Chris Kenny. Neutral zone, steamer side. Sends it along to the left wing boards for Garcia. Cornwell right there. Cornwell double team, got it away to Michael Collins. Up the right wing boards for Leite. Joining in the rush on the left wing side is Petra. Leite lays it off well for Petra over the line. Petra back for Leite in the corner. The shot off the boards. Loose ball. Cleared away. Chris Kenny with a nice defensive play. Ebert keeps it in for Ion. Back for Ebert. Left-footed shot blocked by Bick. Ebert reversed it to the opposite boards. Off the glass. Petra with a header for Greg Ion. Towing it out for Leite. 40-foot shot off the crossbar. Right side settled by Chris White. Tipped wide by Ebert. In the right corner now. It's Chris White. Lasers putting the pressure on. Chris White blocked by Garcia. White stays with it. Those tall, lanky strides keep that ball moving. To the right corner, off the boards. Right in front, Kenny can't clear. Toposki off oh. the post. He had Slobo beaten on that, but it just went wide off the post. Oh, that was a barrage. Oh. We couldn't get out of there. Fredrickson the other way. Intercepted. We've got a foul called on Los Angeles. They're first. Zazinho making his first appearance out there, the older brother of Beto, who's also out injured. Around the boards, and that ball goes out of play. Let's take it to a 30-second break and come right back. It's tied at one. This is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. This club's for all that you do. the live action Zazinho muscle by Tim Schultz and that's going to cost the steamers their second foul two apiece talk about the injuries Nebo the critical one for the steamers we're not sure how long he will be out but he did re injure that hamstring but for the lasers Bursich out with a broken nose Earhart Cap and Beto have sprained knees and we're told that that could be weeks or it could even be the season they're not sure yet in Los Angeles Chris White the other way now over the attack line on the right foot, Fredrickson knocked him down, and that's all of a sudden the third steamer foul. Chris White, your analysis of his long legs is really true. That guy really has a stride. He's hard to knock, to knock off the ball. Played for New York, made the all-star team. Now off the set piece, Greg Ion. Right side, Topolsky comes in. The shot, and he buries it. Los Angeles takes a 2-1 to one lead off of a set play that 
Keith Tozer was talking about before the game, they've got as many set plays probably as anyone in the league with maybe the exception of Baltimore. That ball was played square to Ion coming from the back. We had a two-man wall set up. The ball goes square. Somebody has to go to the ball. Lack of communication. Adi Coker stepped late. He just got there too late. He was wide open. Not only was the ball laid off square, but he was running from the back and got a lot of power on the goal. Slobo didn't see it. There were a lot, lot of good runs, though, off of that ball. Right. It may have confused the steamers, but that's one of the new wrinkles that Keith Tozer has brought to this Lasers club. They're scoring more goals now in set plays than they were before. Ball played up now to Garcia, and he draws the third laser foul. Quick restart, Bain looking for foul zone. High up into the air it goes. Garcia settling it. Plays it into the box. Petra clears it out. Almost hit the scoreboard. Apparently it does not. It comes all the way back. Slobo trapping it off the right foot inside his own red line. As Ebert chases him to Bain. Left side, Chris Kenny in the neutral zone. Lasers lead it. Two to one. Long ball, Bain looking in the corner. Quick one, Bellinger off the boards, and Cornwell deadens it for Tim Harris. Roll to the right side for Petcher. Now back for Lee Cornwell. 8.37 to go in this the opening quarter. Lasers lead 2-1. to one. Leite now leaving it off for Collins, now for Chudin. Collins, the red line, sending it in for Chudin, headed down by Bellinger. And now Tony B settles it down. Topolsky at 5.39, the go-ahead goal. Greg Ion gets the assist at 5. 39 after some nice runs off the ball. Falzone outside the arc. In the left corner, Garcia. And Petra as Petra knocks that one away. Kept alive, but then put it into the crowd off of Tony B. Eight minutes straight up remaining. And this will be opening quarter. There'll be an official's timeout on the floor. Let's break for 30 seconds and come right back. The Lasers lead over the Steamers 2-1. to one. This is have a special game here, actually, out on the floor, where if you take part in it, you can have a clinic on the floor with Franz von Balken, but more on that when we get the opportunity. Two to one, Lasers are leading it as we're back on the live action. Topolsky will bring it up. He and uh, several other Laser players have had major problems with injuries this year after the Lasers had such a great start. Now the ball is played straight through, and it's all the way back to Slobo. Right-handed toss up for Daryl Duran. Broken up, Chris White brings it in over the line. White off the boards, wants his own ball, comes in and he scores! Chris White, what a great individual effort. And if the Lasers are filming this game, that goal belongs in the highlight film. Now he stole the ball from Daryl Duran and just opened up that stride and went over the top of the other defender, reached out with that long right leg and just poked it past Lobo. We sort of gave up on him. We thought we would pick him up, but no one did. He's that quick. He and Marshall Leite, I think, have been dominant out there so far this quarter. You talked about it while we were off the air about it. what a good ball, how they, good they looked, they look and good. they really did. Chris Chude now will take it. White unassisted at 723, but I'll tell you, he's really learned this indoor game. He never played indoors before, and they came over this year, had a bunch of goals, actually 11 with the Express. But he was still learning the indoor game as we've got a fourth foul on Los Angeles. But when you play the ball off the boards like he did, with two players against you, you come in and get your own ball, you can read it that well, you're really picking up the little indoor skills that so many of these other players have had. Here's Duran on the steal, knocking it. Coker shot it wide, he was open. And now Stuart Lee takes it the other way. That was an uncharacteristic miss for Adi Coker to be that wide open and not put that ball away. Coker and Chudin run into each other, and now it's Topolsky giving it across to Chris White. Up the left wing boards for Stuart Lee, broken up. Now Sammy Beck. He's played in more games than any other steamer. He's a steamer original. Across the way to Mark Fredrickson. Freddie over the midfield line, knocking it ahead for Coker, playing as a target man with his back toward the goal, now forced way out by Chris White. That's a tough foul on Chris White. That's the fifth on L.A. Fredrickson has it knocked away once. He'll go back for it. Try to knock it back to the point to Bick, almost taken away by Stuart Lee. Bick keeps it in, knocked out of the box by Chris White. Sammy Bick off his chest will have to recover it back in the midfield line. 6.23 to go in the opening quarter. Lasers lead it 3-1. to one. The last goal, White at 7.23, unassisted on a tremendous individual effort. Slobo setting it long for Garcia. He overruns it. Fredrickson comes in and gets the shot away. Taya Garcia is down. Petra ran into him. That should be the sixth foul. I never even heard a whistle. It might be two minutes instead for boarding. I thought it was two minutes. I never heard the whistle because I saw play continue and I followed the shooter shooting it into Tim Harris, but uh, the foul clock has not changed. 
Petra gave it a little too much there. Well, Pauli Garcia was going into the boards at both feet off the air, and, and Steve Petra just rode him right into it. In fact, it was quite a collision, but then there was a foul right after that, and at first I thought that was the foul. But we get a break here. They've got five team fouls, but we're in a two-minute situation now, power play, and should we not score and they get a six, we get another effort here in this first quarter. Garcia, fortunately, is okay. Bounce right back up. Power play on for the Steamers. Their power play continues to struggle, but it's getting there at 17.3. Garcia sends it across, and Lee and the Lasers help to clear it out. In the last couple of games, their power play has managed to at least get one, but they also gave up a bad shorthanded one against Baltimore. On the left wing side, Redmond Lane to John Bain holding it. Bain looking across the way to Lane. Left footed drive. It's knocked out by Topolsky. Kept in, but Harris makes the play. Actually, the unit that Tony Glavin has out there now is uh, a pretty good-looking unit. And I think had they started the year with that, and of course they couldn't because all of these guys weren't here, they have a better percentage, I would think, by this point. Ball headed away now by Greg Ion, who on that last assist that he registered, picked up his 100th career point in the MISL. On the right side, Duran over the line. Double D, sending it across. Darrell scored the other night against Minnesota. To Bain from 45, the shot knocked down by Harris. Clear it over by Cornwell. No rebound there for the Steamers. Lane with it. Good drive by Bain and a good save by Harris. Bain again from 45. Now 40, the shot, and Harris punches that one to his left. Picked up along the near boards. Garcia, right side of Duran. Right point, Bain holding it. Brings it toward the middle, left point. Lane shot blocked, and it goes out of play. So the Lasers have made a couple of blocks, but you've got to credit Harris because Bain has tested them on at least two good occasions. Los well, Angeles playing a box defense that no one's challenging John Bain. He just split them twice in a row and got the shot off. Now what's going to happen? They're going to challenge him now, so he should lay it off left to our right side. We need a good shot, a good effort by Redmond Lane when the ball comes in, although he did hammer that last one. Bain quarterbacks this unit. Normally he'll pass that ball, but he had a lot of daylight, so he wisely took the shot. Bain cuts it down a lane from 30. Saved by Tim Harris again. Harris looking sharp here, defending on the power play, and the ball goes out of play. Last touch by the Lasers. Los Angeles not very active defensively in their one-man chart. They've really got to hustle, especially on top, up in front. They're not doing it, giving no. us all kind of time. It's all Harris right now. I've counted four saves he's made. Steamers pressuring on the power play, but without the goal so far. Bain from 35, lays it off. Lane will let it go. Wide, Duran rebound. Miss kicking it. And now it's cleared out by Lee Cornwell. Slobo trapping it in the neutral zone. For Lane, 25 seconds left. It's been a good power play, although they've not scored. Bain cutting it a couple of times. Pressured by Ion. Lays it off to Duran, right side of the box area. Back for Bain from 45. Cutting it. Left footed drive. Blocked. It stays in the box, and Stuart Lee, a former steamer, clears it out. Lee traded last year by Kansas City to St. Louis for Petcher. Now they're on the same team. Petcher and Lee. Duran cutting it left. Four lane. Petcher's penalty is expired. It's broken up by Ion and Petcher, and Ion could break two on one. Ion looking now. Now it's two on three. Late pass. Now Petcher will find it. Joining in the rush, Chris White. Tackle away by Duran. Darrell off the boards ahead for Coker with a flick in the middle of Garcia. Not quick enough. And now Petcher will get it on the right side. Kai Steffen, his first shift, knocked away. And back into the steamer zone. St. Louis will get it with 3.43 to go in the opening quarter. And the Lasers up 3-1. St. Louis, right at him now, St. Louis. Take him on. Get that sixth foul. Fredrickson with it. Off the left wing boards for Garcia. Foley plays it back for Tim Schultz at midfield. Right side to foul zone. Pressured now by Chris Chuden, formerly with the Cleveland Force. Long pass intended for Garcia. Headed by Chris White. Bellinger will get it. For Poli, right footed trap, now to the right point. Fredrickson lays it across to the left side for Schultz. Now to Falzone. Charlie Falzone with a run to the right side, blocked by Petcher, and now Chuden steps in the way and wins the ball. Chuden's had a couple of goals already for the Lasers, including a game winner. Falzone played it back, but not enough on that as Chuden made the block. Settled by Petcher in front of Tim Harris, and he'll wait as the Lasers try to change up here. This is Chuden's fourth game with the Lasers. Two goals, one assist for three points. Cacciatore on for his first shift of the night. He got into the game on Friday night. Hadn't dressed in the previous several games. Chuden now in the neutral zone. Back to Michael Collins. Collins going long. Right at Slobo. Slobo rolls it up the middle. 
Tony Bellinger brings it up to the midfield line. 2.25 to go. First quarter, 3-1. to one. Los Angeles leading over St. Louis. And the Lasers have looked very good in this opening quarter of play. Lane the other way. Fredrickson. Both teams played Friday night. Steamers won. The Lasers lost. Lasers have had to travel, though. But they look the fresher of the two teams. Ball played back to Collins. Dangerously plays it back in the box, but Chris White is there. Harris rolls it right side now to Collins. Two minutes straight up remaining. Steamers still have not been able to draw that sixth foul. That's been a thorn in their side the entire season. So many times they've had the opposition with five fouls and have been unable to draw it. It almost seems that we become tentative and the other team has the five fouls. That's what's happening right now. We have to take some chances offensively and try and force our way and draw the foul. Well, there's a foul now, but it's on Chris Kenny as he crunched Marcio Leite. That's the fourth steamer foul. Michael Collins with a restart in the neutral zone. Plays it back to Steve Fetcher. Right side to Leite. Marcio holding it. A good dribbler. He draws the fifth foul. <laughs> Tell you what, if you're going to lay money, you could probably lay even money that the Lasers would draw the sixth foul before the Steamers, and L.A. only had three against them at the time, or the Steamers did. Now they've got five. Get it to Marcio Leite. Yeah, well, you get what the a player out there today. He may draw that six. Petcher off the boards. Ebert overruns it. Leite comes in. Hit his own man, Collins. Or else that might have been a goal. Catch a Torrey coming out of the pack. Broken up by Cornwell in the neutral zone. Now Coker steps in the way. And Cornwell on his horse to get it. Plays it all the way back to his keeper, Tim Harris. Coker pressuring right up the middle. He just got that away. Cornwell now to the right side for Petcher. 109 to go first quarter. A 3-1 to one Los Angeles lead. Each team with five fouls now. Harris going long for Leite. Off the boards, Leite trying to draw it on Chris Kenny, who played it back to Slowball. Ebert almost cut it off. Roll to the left side, Bellinger. Off the boards for Fredrickson, chased by Collins. Cornwell with a challenge. It goes out of play, and it belongs to Los Angeles. A gutsy challenge by Cornwell with five fouls against him. We'll take it to a break. 3-1 Los Angeles. This is St. Louis Steamers soccer. If you're like me, you're keeping your car longer these days. Let's face it, most older cars are out of warranty. That's where this helps. A lifetime guarantee from Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers. If I pay for a covered repair, I never have to pay for it again. Parts or labor for as long as I keep my car. Now, no one backs quality like that unless they can back it up. It makes you wonder about places that don't, huh? For your copy of the lifetime guarantee, see a participating Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer. Ball played into the corner now to Don Ebert. Lasers lead 3-1, to one. each team with five fouls, 32 seconds left in the opening quarter. Played out to the right side for Petcher in the neutral zone, trying to draw everybody out. Now plays it back in, Schultz heads it up for Coker. Adi Coker, nice back heel, Schultz didn't read it. Ebert, on a good recovery, plays it back to Tim Harris. That was a nice ball from Coker. Schultz didn't see it on time and still almost got to it. Cornwell now on the left side. Up for Chuden, knocks it away from Schultz. Chris Chuden over the line. Has Zazinho with him. Into the corner for Zazinho. Off the boards. One at Chuden, but it's away from him. And Bain knocks it up for Garcia. One second left. Well, neither team gets that six foul. The end of one quarter of play. Los Angeles leads over the St. Louis Steamers 3-1. to one. This is St. Louis Steamers soccer. For $7.50, which is $1.50 off the regular $9 ticket. For more information, you can call 781-4030 or call the soccer park. 343-8110. You may even get to speak to Mr. B about that. Second quarter. I'll be there. I'll Under be there in one of the uh, yeah, boots with two of the steamer girls. All right. To the right wing now. Redmond Lane in the corner. Let's see if the steamers have a better second quarter. Uh, Chris Kenny shot is blocked by Ion. Cleared up for Stuart Lee, and the lasers are off and running. Long ball. Left wing for Chris Juden. Chris Kenny back with him. And does a nice job along the right wing boards to take it up the floor. Right side. Now to the middle for Durant. Long ball, a good one to John Bain in the right corner. He'll get it off the boards for Lane. Broke it up. Lasers look for it. Four players are after it. Lane picks it up along the right wing. Redmond to Kenny as a target man that time. Back for Kenny. Now Lane comes out with it. To Daryl Duran, 35 feet from goal. Against Chris White. Two All-Stars in action there. Out to Beck. A shot is blocked. Taken there by Tim Harris. Sammy Beck. You don't see him use that left foot all that often, but he made it almost count there. Chris White and... Marcio Leite, Chris Juden, what great additions for Los Angeles. Add team speed, experience, and they really go after that ball. They, they picked this whole whole club up as far as I'm concerned. Leite with it in the steamer zone. Tell you what, with Bursic in goal, a healthy David Bursic, this is not a bad team to go into the training camp with. 
it's going to take this team a little while to get to know everybody out there. Plus, you've got the new coach who actually started all this. Well, you've got Don Ebert, Steve Petcher also, and they won't hurt you. Slobo will toss in the right side to Duran. Darrell into the neutral zone. Double D up the middle for Mark Fredrickson. Chopped down by Cornwell. No foul called. Now Leite crunched by Bick. And it's starting to get rough out there. And that's because there's no fouls called. Now finally Marty Templin blows the whistle. And that's the first foul. I saw about three of them there, though, before that one. Sometimes you can let them play too much. Schultz will play it up the right side for Coker. Adi Coker for Fredrickson. Was it blocked as it goes out of play? Apparently not. Lee Carnwell and Fredrickson having a few words there. There have been some collisions earlier in that first quarter starting to come up again, but Freddie's not going to back off, and Carnwell's a tough ball player, so that'll be a good matchup this afternoon. Mark Fredrickson just having an exceptional year. Had the game winner the other night. It would prove to be the game winning goal. 13 goals this year, 15 assists, 28 points already. More goals than he had all of last year. He's still down in assists a bit, and more overall points, and this is his 237th consecutive game. And this is the first time, by the way, coming into this game that Freddie has not led the team in block shots. Bick, who had uh, won the other night, and Freddie, who had none, has taken the lead, 48-47. Ebert the other way, takes the shot, and Slobo stops it on the short side. One score to give you right now, Tacoma leading Cleveland 3-1 to in the second quarter, that game in Cleveland. On the left side, Petcher, left-footed. Ebert just missed that. Had he got a piece of that, that might have been deflected home. Bellinger will send it back to Slobo. Long toss, or short toss, I'm sorry. Right side to Coker. Sending it long this way. Fredrickson on the run. Collins back to pick him up. Mark Fredrickson now pulls up. Brings it back out. 40 feet from goal. For Coker, knocked away by Petcher. Fredrickson gets it. Blocked by Collins. Freddie with a header in the box. Headed out by Petcher. Now Bellinger trying to send it in to Fredrickson. It goes out of play. We'll take it to a short break. 3-1 LA. This is St. Louis Steamer Sock. Silver citizens, now there's no need to drive across town to save money and enjoy the privileges you deserve. Announcing the all-new Silver Cover. It's specially designed for your Silver Pages phone directory, and it's loaded with important service numbers and a list of caring merchants who are right around the corner and want your business. They prove it by offering you big discounts. The Silver Cover, just for you, the Silver Citizen, arriving free in your mailbox from your association of silver merchants. Back live at the St. Louis Arena, John Paul Della Camera, along with Mr. B, Bob Brunette, as the Steamers find themselves on the short end of a 3-1 to one score. Tim Harris with it. Up the middle for Greg Ion. White to Polsky and Collins for L.A. Bain for St. Louis. White into the corner for Zazinho. He misses. White got a second chance missed. He'll try it again in the box. Tackled away and swept away by Chris Kenny. Now Chudin pushed from behind by Garcia. First Steamer foul. There's one on Los Angeles. Steamers... A little bit behind in their marking right there. A couple players wide open. Yeah, half a step behind. Of course, Los Angeles, good team speed, and they're really playing this afternoon. Topolsky in the restart. It's blocked by Poli Garcia, and it goes out of play, so they'll try it again. Shots on goal first quarter. Steamers 10, 5 for Los Angeles, but about four or five of them came when the Steamers had a power play, and that's why Harris has six saves and Slobo a couple. So the shots on goal very misleading. With the exception of that power play, it was Los Angeles in the opening quarter. And on the scoreboard, it counts 3-1 L.A. Greg Ion on the restart. Same two teams meet in Los Angeles Tuesday. Out to Chris White, a shot. Not enough on it, and Slobo stopped that, but I don't think he saw it through a screen until the last moment. See a lot of movement up in front by Los Angeles across that box, drawing some of our defenders to him. And that opens that guy in the back, and that's what happened. Made that good ball to him, and White got enough on it. Slobo, good stop. Lane off the way, and Garcia almost poked it in, but Harris did a nice job to reach back. Tim Harris rolling it to the left side to Chris White. Lasers have so many newcomers that a lot of the players don't even have the names in the jersey yet. But that's coming. Ion to Leite, spinning on Tim Schultz, then lost the ball with Garcia, helping out in support. Schultz fakes to go back to the goalkeeper. Now brings it up the left side. Leite takes him down. Two fouls on Los Angeles, one on St. Louis. Bick will play it across now to an open man, John Bain, quickly covered up by Greg Ion, trying to find Garcia along the boards, and it goes out of play. Don't forget the Steamers and Bush Soccer Club's mini clinic with Franz von Balkum before the Steamers game on April 17th at the arena. For all of the information, just contact the Steamers sales office at 781-4030. And don't forget that new soccer film by Budweiser. I understand it's an excellent film titled On the Attack. That's available that night at the Bush Soccer Club booth, and that will be located inside the main entrance to the arena. 
Those are three 30-minute tapes. Very, very well done. And incidentally, at halftime, Franz von Balkum and 10 of the Bush Soccer Club players will put on, will have a demonstration of these on-the-attack skills. So it'll be a great night. Slobo brings it up over his own red line. Up the right wing side boards. Fredrickson blocked by Michael Collins. Freddie, nice hustle to win it out to Bellinger. In the box, Falzone trying to steer it the other way, and Petra knocks it out, and that goes out of play. With 10.48 to go, it was last touched by Los Angeles. Julio Salas pointing to where the ball should be put back in play, and the ball belongs to the Steamers. In, the, in this Nebo Bandovich, you can see that it was apparent. He scored a great goal Friday night, and right after that, re-injured that hamstring, but he's that roadrunner, that guy that can really break it for you. It takes off, and they don't have that out there as yet this afternoon. Fredrickson now lifting it for Duran with his back to goal, wanting to turn, but everybody comes in after him, and Petra knocks it away. It's a good point about Nebo, because even though you've got other skilled forwards out there, you don't have anyone where the other team marks up man-to-man, -man, such as Baltimore would have done against him with Savage. Instead, the other day, Savage came out and scored a couple of goals without having to worry about Nebo. Here's Falzone shooting wide. To the right side, boards for Tony Bellinger. In a box, Duran. Tried to turn, kicked away by Cornwell. And now Michael Collins takes it. Right side for Don Ebert. Ebert got a nice hand when he was introduced to the fans here. So did Petcher. But the goal scorers always seem to get the bigger ovation. We see a lot of nice signs out here. A few that I've seen uh, very supportive of Ebert and Petra. Not that they don't like Garcia and Kavanaugh because they seem to be fan favorites early as we have a three-line pass, but it's tough to forget when players have played for years, and I'm sure Garcia will get the same kind of recognition when he goes back to Los Angeles on Tuesday because he was their all-time leading scorer. Fredrickson on the restart from the red line of L.A. Ten minutes to go, second quarter. Steamers need a couple to tie. Right side, Duran turning, didn't get enough on it. St. Louis seems to be moving the ball, though, a little bit better and having... Uh, more play, at least in the offensive zone, uh, than they did at the same time in the opening quarter. Cornwall taking it the other way, intercepted. Tony Bellinger hit it off foul zone. Chun will pick it up. Now Fredrickson will knock it back to Slobo. 3-1 Los Angeles leading. Slobo now moving it up to Fredrickson at the steamer red line. Freddie ahead to Beck, knocked back. Chris Kenny, a regular since the second game, played collegially for SLU, and before that, Flow Valley Community College. Kenny across the right side. Ana Garcia, neutral zone on the laser side. Holy stutter steps into the attack end. Right side boards. Garcia off the boards. Nobody trailing it. And now it's picked up by Chris Chuden. Getting it by Chris Kenny on the right. They go shoulder to shoulder. Kenny was holding him. It's a good call by Marty Templin. At least you could see it from up here. Maybe not so good a view from the steamer's bench. They're arguing it. But Kenny was with him shoulder to shoulder, but you could see him hanging on there. Two very strong players. In fact, they're built alike. Kenny has dark hair, chewed and blonde hair, but other than that, they're very husky and very quick and very physical. Ball played long and tender for Chewden. Now he'll get it off the boards, but Sammy Bick is there, and he leaves it off for Slobo. Right side, Bain open over the midfield. Good distribution by Slobo. Bain carries it in over the line. John Bain cutting. Gives it a coker. Laid off for Bain. Left-footed shot blocked. Chris White may have saved the goal because Harris was screened. Nice job with Coker and Bain. Did you see Coker just lay it there, put it right on the dish. Boy, Bain came after it. Looked like he picked that one up with San Diego. He did that so many times, didn't he? Off the glass the other way, and Bain will head it back for Slobo. Those are the kind of things that the Steelers will have to pick up on because Coker loves to lay that off. Off the boards, left wing. Vic heads it off the boards. Loose. Topolsky kicks it high off the glass, and it will go out of play, and the Steamers will end up with a corner kick with 8-12 to go. Here in the second quarter, Los Angeles leading it 3-1. to one. one goal, though, by the Steamers can change the complexion of this one rapidly. Friday night and today, we've been hitting balls off the glass and boards, and it seemed like our forwards are people coming in. Too deep, the ball's getting in behind him penetrating too deep. We're going to have to play somebody in there on the keeper, but lay somebody off to get those rebounds. John Bain on the restart. Out to Lane. He guns it. It's blocked by Stuart Lee. To the left wing boards. To Polsky. Up for Michael Collins. Lead ball, but it's behind Ebert, who tripped on a rut in the carpet. Ebert right back up. He lost his balance in trying to go back for that ball, which uh, had it been a lead pass, he might have been walking in. It was behind him. Tim Harris now 
Send, try to send it off the glass for Chris White. It goes out of play. We'll have an official's timeout on the floor. 7.48 to go. And this is the second quarter. We'll break for 30 seconds and come right back. Association of America 1986 NCAA MetLife Coach of the Year for Men's Regional Senior College Division II. It went to the University of Missouri at St. Louis coach Don Dallas. So we congratulate Don. A check to the UMSL Athletic Department for MetLife goes along with the award. That was before the game. We would like to acknowledge Don Dallas for receipt of that. Back the other way, Michael Collins over the midfield line. Lays it off for Leite, right side to Topolsky. Two fouls on each side, Lasers lead three to one. Duran takes it away from Topolsky in midfield. In over the attack line, going left to right. Leite slowing him down, knocked back to Ebert. Broken up, and now Topolsky will get it back. Back for Tim Harris, 7.21 to go. Second quarter, Los Angeles three, the Steamers won. Each team has won once this year in their own buildings. Collins cutting it. Near the Steamers penalty arc. Collins lets it go from 40. It hit off Leite. Picked up along the left wing boards. Poli Garcia. Six goals in his short time here with the Steamers. It's been a hot score over midfield. Poli Garcia over the line. Right side from 40. Almost beat Harris to the far side. Good shot from Garcia. Who brings a history of being a good goal scorer with him. All he did was change uniforms. But he still has that touch. And hopefully the Steamers will have that touch for years to come. 29 years old, Poli Garcia. On the right side, now it's Cornwell. Over the attack line, Cornwell shooting it, punched out by Slowball. That was a good shot from Cornwell. Petcher now lost it at the neutral zone. Goes back for it, plays it across to Cornwell. Six and a half left, second quarter. Ball played intended for Chris Chuden. Slowball knocking it off the boards. Chuden will pick it back up for Zazinho in the corner. Knocking Chris Kenny down. Zazinho got it across, but Slowball's right there. Lasers lead it three to one. If you just joined us, 6-12 to go in this the second quarter. No scoring, though, in the second quarter after four goals were scored in the opening. Garcia knocking it back to Tony Bellinger. Neutral zone. Tony B. Try to find Schultz. It goes out of play. We'll take our final break of the quarter. Lasers 3, St. Louis 1. This is St. Louis Steamers soccer. We're here with Davey Johnson, manager of the Mets. Okay, Davey. Now, let's say the Mets are down 13 runs. Bottom of the fourth inning, and there are two outs. What do you do? I reach for roll aids. Roll aids had acid, but what about the... Sure, you know what ballpark food and 13 runs down does to my stomach. Yeah, okay, okay, but then what would you do? I'd chew them up. Makes me feel better fast. But what about the game? I'd pray for rain. Uh, thanks, Davey. Get serious relief. Get roll aids. Use only as directed. Tim Schultz brings the ball up for the Steamers. They trail 3-1, 5.45 to go. And this is the second quarter. On the left side, Fredrickson over the line. Picked up by Greg Ion in the corner. Lane off the boards. Loose ball cleared out. Petcher could have saved the goal because Garcia was like a vulture in that box waiting for the ball. One thing to note about Los Angeles, at least this afternoon, very tough defensively. Mark up very, very well, and they haven't made any mistakes. We just don't have anyone coming in. Unmarked. Petcher right there. What's goal side? Just flicked it away. But prior to that, every time we come down, there's a man on him. Fredrickson on the restart, 5.39 to go. Second quarter, Lasers leading it 3-1. to one. Freddie plays it out. Bick blocked in front by Cornwell. Harris picks it up, looking for a quick counter. It was behind Zazinho. He'll catch up to it over the red line, feeding left side to Greg Ion. Tell you what, a good distribution, and they might have had a score out of that one, or at least a great opportunity to break in two-on-one. Now Falzone picks it up for the Steamers. Goalkeeper Tim Harris for the Lasers wide awake, except he did not make a good throw, but he saw what he could have done there. Bick sending it in off the glass. Duran off the boards and wide. Picked up by Lee Cornwell for Leite in his own zone. Marcio Leite played with Pittsburgh and then Dallas this year. Had 19 goals with a sidekick, so now we've got a whistle and a foul called on L.A. That's their third. Bain on the restart to Bick in the neutral zone. Leite on him. Sammy takes it right. Draws two men, now dumps it in off the right boards. Coker and Cornwell. Adi Coker got a piece, shooting off the boards. Hops all the way up to Greg Ion. He knocks it back to Leite. Marcio Leite, a good dribbler. Takes it in very slowly over the steamer line. Now Petcher joins him. Leite holding it. Good ball. Ion, he'll score it from Leite. Same situation. We had three defenders to their two forwards, and nobody picked him up. Leite just... Held the ball, held the ball, nobody challenged him. I'll tell you someone else, Steve Petcher making a run on an overlap yeah. from the right to the left side, drew a defender, at least it froze him. 
They didn't know what to do, and he laid that ball square, and bang, it was in the net. Time of the goal, 10-24. Were they ball watching Leite as he was pushing it back and forth? Because the Petcher run that you mentioned, I think, was uh, very significant, but Leite threads the needle. Ion takes it at the arc, and there is Slobo just against him. We had two defenders standing there and didn't move. Probably worried about Leite. If he if he beats one of our defenders, someone's going to pick him up, but no one did, and he just laid it over. Great pass and a great goal. Yeah, when Leite is by that penalty arc, lots of times he'll dribble, try to take somebody on, and he'll let that shot go, but he saw Greg Ion open, and a good run, as you mentioned, by Petcher. Now it's Collins who has it knocked away all the way back. Chris Kenny will take it. Left side for Mike Hyla. Hyla's first shift. Brings it all the way in from 30 feet. Stops. Passes to Bain. It was just slightly behind him as John Bain tried to direct that one home. Now it's Stuart Lee on the left side. Blocked. Lee will get it back. Knocking it for Collins. Now the Lasers lead 4-1. to one. Up the right side boards for Don Ebert. Kenny and Ebert muscle each other. No foul. Slobo tossing it right side for John Bain. Right side for Cacciatore. Across the way to Kenny. Over the line. Chris Kenny from 40 feet. Off the boards wide. Collins knocks it. Kenny almost gets it back. And now Chris Wide will take it along the far boards. Back for Tim Harris. What's been the difference besides Nebo, who played in the first quarter from Friday night? Well, Nebo, no difference in Friday night. We, you know, I think we're playing okay, but Los Angeles is playing very well this, this afternoon. Friday night, we seem to have more opportunities, but then again, credit Los Angeles and their tenacious defense. They're all over us, and plus the fact they've got great team speed, and they'll come out firing themselves. Ball played into the corner for Stuart Lee. Pushed by Bellinger, blocked. Fredrickson looking for it. Fredrickson picking it up, going for Hyla. He heads it back dangerously. Ebert almost got that one in the penalty arc. Hyla now takes it along the left wing boards and now starts to bring it forward. Knocking it back to Fredrickson and now picked up by Tony Bellinger. Seven-time All-Star. He and Steve Jungle, the only two players in the league that can make that claim. Right side boards, Adi Coker. Steamer's now down by three. Out to Bellinger from 35. Left footed drive blocked by Collins. Topolsky in the air to win it. Now Bellinger knocks it straight up. Topolsky again, heading it right out of the zone. Back near midfield comes Fredrickson. Shooting, picking him up. Freddie up for Coker. Flicked it to the right side. Schultz not expecting it. Now he'll get it in the right wing boards. Schultz bringing it back out. Looking for help. Plays it out to the point area. Fredrickson sending it in long off the glass. Takes a strange bounce. Coker now with Leite on him. Adi Coker back for it. Along the boards. Garcia holding it, turning it off the boards. Nobody picking him up. Now Bick comes in, blocked by Michael Collins. Far side, Schultz is blocked. White, Collins, and Chudin off to the races, three on three. Collins over midfield, cuts it back to the right side. Now leaves it off for Chudin. Collins to the bench for a line change. Chris White as well. Lasers don't have enough players out there right now. What a slow change that was. Greg Ion, the midfielder, never came on. A late day shot, just missed the far post. Garcia now picking it up and plays it right back to Slobo. 1.46 to go in the first half. Tony Glavin will want to talk to the troops That's when it. this half is over. To Marcio Leite, the dominant player. He freezes everyone. We were so worried about him. On the right side, Bick lets it go. Harris misjudged it, but it's too high. Kenny chesting it, shooting it. Blocked by Chudin. Fredrickson for 35. A big save for Harris. That Fredrickson shot was labeled. Now it's Chudin and Leite. Combining to bring it out of the zone. Chudin knocks it ahead of the midfield line. Ion off the boards. He had Chudin in his vision, but didn't quite bang it there. And Chudin is at the end of his shift. Out of gas, as they say. Slobo will bring it up. 109 to go. First half. Up for Duran. Now to Sammy Beck. Knocked away by Zizinho, but Beck will keep it alive in the zone. Sammy to the right boards. Draws the foul. Wondering why there wasn't the advantage played on there because the steamers had possession. Ball played up now to Coker. Left for Fredrickson. Runs after it himself. Off the boards. Comes out. Schultz bangs it wide. Ion sent it back dangerously, and Harris flicked it out. Ion, an uncharacteristic move back to his goalkeeper when he had St. Louis players there. We've got a foul now on the Steamers as Zuzinho hits the deck. Great effort by the Steamers. They're all over Los Angeles. Can't get a break. Freddie just missed on that. That's and now a timeout is going to be called. You wonder where Fredrickson gets all of that energy. But he burns off a tremendous amount of calories during a game. 42 seconds left in this, the second quarter. And the Lasers are leading over the Steamers 4-1. to one. You know what? Even when the Steamers get a break, I mean, Greg Ion, one of the smarter players out on the floor, but he
he actually makes a bad pass right back to his goalkeeper, and Fredrickson got a piece of it, but then Harris makes a spectacular save, so it's even when the Lancers don't look sharp, it just doesn't seem, at least in the first half. I thought match one nothing semifinals. Now, let's be honest. Is the, the only national reason, championship. Is the only reason you're bringing this up because you know personally the coach of that team and it was yourself? No, I'm not the coach. Oh, I just not? sit there and turn in the cards. They've oh, got okay. some great players. Denny Vaniger scored the game-winning goal. They'll appreciate you mentioning that. Former uh, MISL player and That's NASL right. player. Here comes Durant over midfield. Over the attack line. Steamers would love to get one now. It's blocked wide. Off the boards. Loose ball. Shot blocked again. That ball not finding its way to the net. 18 seconds left. Steamers desperately trying to get closer before the half ends. On the left side, Ion has it knocked away by Bain. Now Bellinger lifting it for John Bain. Headed off the boards. And Leite takes it. Now it's back for Cornwell. Back for Tim Harris with Coca right there. Two seconds. One. That's it. The horn sounds. The Lasers have played one of the better halves that I'm sure they've played all season. It was We're going to try to bring a cup, so... Greg, All the best to you guys. Thanks for joining us, Greg. Thanks, Morning. Greg. And just for that, you can start next Sunday again. <laughs> Tell you that. <laughs> thanks, Mr. B. <laughs> Greg Mikowski, former steamer, our guest here at halftime. I mean, if this was indoor soccer, you would have put him on the power play right after that, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's see if the steamers can change things here in the second half of play. But the Lasers played probably their best half all season in that opening half of play. They lead it 4-1, to and here we go. Los Angeles with the ball. They'll go right side to left. Lee Cornwell up for Leite. Hitting the boards that time was Bellinger as the ball is played all the way back for Slobo. Good to see Greg Mikowski. Hadn't, I haven't seen him myself all year. Neat guy and a lot of good years at with the Steamers, Kansas City. Just, you know, great for the league. Yeah. And I remember that big left foot. How could you forget that? Michael Collins the other way off the boards. He liked your sweater, too. I told you, that's a nifty that's sweater. It. It's a classic, and probably have 40 or 50 people wanting to buy it. <laughs> Not going to give it up. Slobo with it. Outside his own arc area. 14-14 to go. This is only the third quarter. Lots of time left for the Steamers to get back in, but they can't give up any more goals to the Lasers, at least not the way the Lasers have been playing it up to this point. Slobo with it. Inside his own red line. Now across it. Slobo going off the left wing boards. Redmond Lane picked up by Topolsky. Knocked back to the left point. John Bain is with it. Bain to Tony Bellinger. Picked up by Ebert to the right side boards. Off a of deflection lane is there. Picked up by Adam Topolsky. Now right side shot wide. Garcia looking for the rebound, but it doesn't come. And Ebert plays it right back to Tim Harris. Steamer's showing some good offensive tactics again. But here, Los Angeles at the critical stage picking up that loose ball. Adam Topolsky stepping over the ball and just slowing things down for the Lasers. Looking at the situation, Steamers have just changed up with the, another unit coming on. Coker on with Duran and Fredrickson. The ball clear it now as Fredrickson heads it down. It goes deep into the Steamer zone, but Bick is right there to win it back for Slobo. We've got a player down on the floor, and it's Chris Kenny, who apparently when everyone went up for that header, got tangled up in there somewhere, and Kurt Metzger will go out and take a look. It was a collision. Chris Kenny got hit in the head. I don't know whether it's someone else's head or an elbow or what but he really went down in a heap and you know he must have got nailed because that's one of the stronger players out there on the floor if he has to go to the bench because he got tagged he really got tagged 13 14 to go Chris Kenny is one of those uh, players that's so rough you don't even like to practice against him let's see where they're going to put this drop ball they're going to apparently they're going to bring it all the way back to where Sammy Bick had won the ball and played it back to Slobo and Duran will take it away from shooting right there on the left wing board. Steamers will go left to right, but right now they're pinned in their own zone. Play right back to Slobo. Long toss up the left wing sideline for Adi Coker. Play it across the other way. Now back for Daryl Duran. Scores from out of town. Tacoma 3, Cleveland 2. That is in the fourth quarter. No score. Baltimore, Wichita in the first quarter up in Wichita. Ball played now back as Fredrickson takes it. Right wing boards. Off the boards for Duran. Couldn't quite get it as Topolsky and Lee sandwiched him. Off the boards, Duran will get it from Schultz. Daryl Duran stopped on the short side by Harris. Duran again, left foot a drive. Save Harris. Duran with a beautiful maneuver to get it free. And now a Schultz shot, but it's right at Tim Harris. And Harris continues to impress this afternoon. He's had a bunch of saves. And as we told you before, 15 at the end of the first half. Schultz right at the midfield line. Has that ball go out of play. Last touch by Schultz. Duran made a nice move on the last shot on Harris after he got the ball back. 
on his right foot, played it behind his back with a back heel, basically caught up to it with his left foot, drilled it, but Harris was right there. He followed every fake and stayed with him. Under high pressure he did that. That was MISL, I think, part of their highlight film. That was a great move in there with heavy traffic. Steve Petcher, former steamer, blocked. Adi Coker takes it back, right wing. Hit over the line. Adi slows it down on the right wing boards. Knocks it back. Tim Schultz from 45. In closer. Now shooting it wide. Ebert knocks it off the boards. He and Coker battle along the near side. Schultz comes in. Takes the ball away. Schultz trying to play it back to Leite. Good idea, but not a good pass. And Leite will cover it up. John Bain was wide open had that ball been crisp and delivered on time. Petcher now on the right side. Reversing to Michael Collins. Collins picked up by Garcia. Now played back to Steve Petcher. This is the first time that all of these players have played against each other since the trade. They'll play twice in three days. Ebert now turning and blocked by Sammy Beck. Looked like a good opportunity, but Beck closed him down, and the ball goes out of play with 11.38 to go in the third quarter. The Lasers put it in play. They lead it by the score of 4-1, to one, and now Bellinger will replace Sammy Beck. There's a difference now. Danny Ebert, Steve Petcher playing on the same team for so long, they, they can read one another. He gave him a great ball. Donnie fake going to the left, came back to the right, got a good ball from Petcher, beat Beck, and had a shot on goal. Cornwell trying to play it through, and now Bellinger knocks it out. Both coaches happy with the trade thus far. Catch a Torrey knocking it back now to Slobo. Slobo holding on. Again, Tacoma leading Cleveland 3-2. Baltimore and Wichita are scoreless. A lot of activity today in the MISL. Last night, only one game in Kansas City. Beat San Diego in San Diego 6-2. Bain tried to lay it off for Cacciatore. Broken up by Collins and played back to Tim Harris. Off the left wing boards intended for Chudin. Oh, he's nailed on the boards. As Chris Kenny blocked him and there was going to be a penalty for boarding. And I tell you, from my level up here, it didn't look as bad. I think... Chris Chuden was going so fast along those boards there, and he really may have injured himself. Scott Morrison, the trainer, out to get him. I don't think there was as much contact there, but as soon as uh, Kenny was with him, you know that the penalty is going to be called for boarding. And that might be a serious knee injury. Hopefully it's not, but Chuden limping to the laser bench. Well, let's put it this way. Both men, again, very fast, very physical, and they... They hit head on or side to side, so to speak, but Chuden had his head down looking at the ball and Chris was really flying in yeah. there, but Chris was trying to knock him off off the ball to win the ball, but he went into yeah. the boards. I'm looking at it over the play and I know it looked like Chris got a piece, but not as serious. I think Chris lost a bit of his balance on his own, but that's neither here nor there. They're going to get that call. Power play on for the Lasers. Left wing side. Leite held by Schultz and that's going to be only the first foul. Leite gives it up quickly to Collins. Lasers in the power play. Collins' drive is wide. Settled. Petra the shot. Blocked to the box by Tony Bellinger. Lasers power play. Ranking 10th in the league, but at 29.4. Almost twice the percentage that the Steamers have coming in. But only five more goals in uh, less opportunities, though. Leite over the line. Giving it up to Michael Collins. Collins from 45. Try to find Stuart Lee at the far post, and it's knocked out of play by the Steamers. And Lee is the kind of guy that you got to watch out for because he's got eight power play goals. Likes to play that far post. Great play in soccer, especially indoor soccer, and especially when they're on the power play. Play that far board. They seem leave you alone. A lot of goals scored there. And with Lee and Ebert up front there, you've got some good finishers if that ball gets across. Michael Collins now with Leite and Petra on the power play. Petra across a slow pass, but Leite will get it. He uncorks it. It's wide. He got everything into that with a footed drive. Had that pass been a little bit crisper, though, Leite would have had a chance to bring it in a few more feet and then let it go. Half of the penalty has been killed by the Steamers' penalty killing unit. Collins now to Ebert. Lays it off for Leite along the boards. He knocks it out of the left point. Now center point. Make it a Collins. Michael Collins, right side. Petra back to Collins, center point. Cuts on Schultz, plays it to Ebert. One touch, lays it off. Leite, far boards, off the boards. It hops free, and Schultz will clear it out. Ball bouncing too much there for the Lasers. 33 seconds left on the man advantage. Collins from Tim Harris brings it in over the steamer red line. Let's it fly from 50, blocked by Tony Bellinger. Petcher back to the midfield line again at nine and a half to go. Third quarter, 4-1 Los Angeles. Left wing boards, Leite lets it go across. It's blocked by Sammy Beck. Now Ebert will pick it up, being chased from behind at midfield, Petcher. 
Left side, Leite, seven seconds left on the power play. Leite dribbling to his left, along the boards. Getting by Schultz, in the corner deep. Leite still with it, pokes it out, Stuart Lee, blocked by Sammy Vick, he saved the goal. Great move by Leite, though. Collins across the way, Ebert. Fans as he try to turn and fire, Leite picks it up. Leite's been all over the floor, now he'll go to the bench on a well-deserved breather. He'll be replaced by Topolsky. They'll bring another defender out there. Collins with it. Same unit still out there for L.A. because they can't change. Now Chris White on for Petcher. Midfield, Topolsky waits. Throws it back for Chris White. Lasers, we told you they're playing without Beto, Cap, Versich. Also, Gus McAllister returned home to Greece for the week. His sister died in a car accident there, so tough times for Gus McAllister. Here's White over the line, left wing. Off the boards, Kai Steffen looks for it, but Bellinger got a piece. White reached in, should be a dangerous play, and it is. Now it's put in play quickly to Daryl Duran. One foul on each side. Double D, an all-star this year for the second time in his career. Right side to Coker at the midfield line. Adi Coker back for Daryl Duran. Both Steamers defenders actually went up the floor. And Mike Hyler has been playing as a defender now for the Steamers on the shift. Coker lays it out for Hyla. Held from behind. What an obvious foul on the part of Kai Steffen. That's awful close to two minutes. Such was the holding job. Boy, I would have thought he would have pulled a card on that because he was going all alone, right in on the keeper. Yep, might have been around him. Might have gotten right by him. Bain out to Duran. A shot. It looked like White may have blocked that one off the line. He and Harris were right there, but I think Chris White got a piece. Left wing boards for Duran. Darrell, sandwich taken down, and a foul in two minutes. Two-minute penalty called on the Lasers. And we'll wait and see who it's on because it was both Stefan and I on that were right in there. We'll take it to a break and come right back. There should be an official's timeout on the floor, and that's what the call is now. So we'll take it to a one-minute break. Lasers lead 4-1 to one Steamers power play when we return to St. Louis Steamers soccer. For Bush beer. It's that time of day when you can say, Come on and head for the mountains. The taste is more goals out of this well, one. That's right. That hill can get a lot steeper. You're back by three, and there is a lot of time, but they get another one. Look out. We've got to capitalize here and bring it within two right now. We Kept going over to Redmond Lane the last time we it. Switched a little bit now. Daryl Duran's open, and we've got to move the ball a little bit quicker. Chudin back on, so he's okay to try and kill off this penalty. He was boarded by Chris Kenny and came up limping. John Bain with it from 40 feet. He's their quarterback on this unit to Duran. Off the boards and wide. Picked up by Stuart Lee. Can't clear it. It hits off Bain. Redmond Lane with it. Now back to Bain. Bain to Lane, the shot too high. Settled by Duran, right wing boards, and off his hand. So the handball called by Julio Salas, the other official on the floor with Marty Templet. 136 left on the power play for the Steamers. Remember the first time the power play was, it seemed to be very sharp, except that they couldn't beat Harris. He made four or five good saves. Well, Garcia has not touched the ball yet. He went through two minutes the other one, and we're you know, we're half a minute into this one. He hasn't touched the ball. Neither has Adi, Adi Coker, rather. So we've got to do something a little bit different. They're flooding out on Lane. Lane drop it down deep one time, either to Coker or Garcia, and let something happen from there. Durant sends it far side. Garcia towing it out now to Lane from 40. Back for Poli in the corner. Off the boards, he wants Coker. Just missed him, but Coker will get the ball now out to Bain. That didn't miss by much for Coker to get a shot away. John Bain from 45. Right side to Duran. Back for Bain. It's off the mark. Bain will have to let it go for Lane. Far side boards. Redmond to Pauli Garcia. Back out to John Bain. Power play still has 53 seconds left. Cut back to Lane from 30. It's blocked wide of the goal. Picked up by Duran. Off the boards it goes. Lane has to settle it. On his right foot now. Left foots it to Bain. The shot just off the post. He had Harris beat from 35, 40 feet. Bain again from 40. Off the post again. No luck for John Bain. Kept alive, Duran shot, blocked by Cornwell and out of play at Ghost Steamers. Got to be shaking their heads, especially John Bain. Well, he is shaking his head. He can't believe it. Hit the left post on the first shot, came right back, hit the right post. Adi Coker doing what he has to do. He's screening the keeper in there, and that's why he's in there. He's moving with it, providing that moving screen, shooting from the outside. Well, Cleveland the other night had, I believe, 17,000 people right up near there, if not 17, and they beat Chicago big 10-4. I'm sure they had a big crowd here this afternoon, and they lost at Tacoma. 
four to three. That must have been a great game. Ball played out to Lane from 35, blocked by Stuart Lee. John Bain back for it. Right side to Duran. Double D, pump shoots. It's blocked. I think, well, they're going to call it a goal. I thought it was a handball. Paulie Garcia gets it. He had gone down. He fell down, Mr. B. And I thought he touched it with his hand, but the lasers are not complaining, and it's a goal. Well, he reached back, had both hands behind him, kind of caught the ball at, with his legs and nestled it in there and then just flicked it on with that right foot. But he was on the far post. Gerald Duran shooting for the far post, and that's so important in soccer, especially on a power play here. That was a big goal. Absolutely. Give Poli his 16th goal of the year. And for Garcia, he now has seven goals in seven games with the Steamers. The assist went to Duran. I looked right away at Marty Templin to see, and it seemed like uh, his arms went up a little bit late, but nonetheless, he put him right up there to indicate it was a goal. I thought there was a potential for it to be waved off on a quick look. Here's Falzone the other way. Now let's see what the Steamers can do. They're within a couple of goals now. Schultz lets it go through a screen, and Harris just saw it. I think Falzone may have tipped that one as well on the way in. It changed speed drastically. Well, Falzone and Cacciatore in the box, trying to screen the keeper, shot from the outside. Good play. Michael Collins at the red line of L.A. That's a power play goal. Garcia's 16 from Duran. Up the left wing boards now, picked up by Leite. Leite double teamed and blocked. He'll still maintain possession. 70 feet out. Back heels for Chris White. Across the way, Topolsky wide open. Right side, the shot off the crossbar. Tell you, Topolsky didn't have a player within 15 feet of him. Everyone was over to the near side. Leite with it. Now draws two players to him. Dribbling. Brings it to the middle. Lays it back for Chris White. Neutral zone. Off the boards for Collins. Back for Chris White. Holding it. Back pedals to midfield. Cuts it for Collins. 4-2. to two. Lasers leading over the Steamers. 5.02 to go. Third quarter. Lots of time left. Steamers get it off the right wing boards. Catch a Torre. To Fredrickson over midfield. Freddie in over the attack line. Cuts it well. Bellinger off the post. Great pass and a nice shot as well. Fredrickson lost it off the far boards and out of play it goes. We'll take our last break of the quarter. Lasers four, Steamers two. This is St. Louis Steamers soccer. Face it, there's a little high adventure in all of us. Your challenge might be a mahogany paneled boardroom, but your instincts are still the same. Put your neck on the line, but get the job done. If that sounds familiar, there's only one metal roller pen that's made for you, the medium point Pilot Brome. In a Me Too world, the Pilot Brome stands out with a stroke that'll drive your point home boldly, decisively. If boldness is in your blood, the Pilot Brome should be in your hand. Only $1.29 at local office supply stores. AM 630, KXOK, St. Louis. Lasers are leading it by the score of 4-2 to two over the Steamers. Steamers got the last goal and the last foul. Give it to Garcia. Should be the third on St. Louis. The Lasers have two. Tell you what, the Steamers have come very close and had they been able to score on that last effort, Bellinger on a great feed from Fredrickson. You would have talked about momentum certainly being on the Steamers side, especially if they could have scored him that quickly back to back. Bick on the right side boards. Lost it to Zazinho. Now to Chudin by the arc. Blocked by Chris Kenny. Coker comes in, knocks it away, and Chris Kenny takes it. Right side, Adi Coker, neutral zone. Lead pass, John Bain with a good run down the right wing. Bain in the corner, brings it back out. John Bain holding it. Back to Bick. Sending it in long. Bain picks it up, hit off the post again. That's three times for Bain on his rebound. Shooting up the left wing to Ion over the attack line. Ion puts it in on goal, and Slobo's right there. That was a waste. And now the Lasers have to retreat. Slobo brings it out to midfield. Knocks it ahead for Bick over the line. Sammy from 40, far side, and almost stuffed in by Garcia. Great effort by Poli Garcia from Bick. 3.47 left, third quarter. Steamers down by a couple. Played across to Leite. Big steals. Up for Garcia. Lasers must retreat. Collins knocked the ball down. Now for Chris White in the corner. Left wing side boards. He's double teamed. Foul on Redmond Lane. Not a good foul at that juncture because it's the fourth on the Steamers. And they had two players on Chris White, and that would have been enough pressure, I thought. Now Steamers really into it now. Got the second goal, and momentum is on their side, and they want to just... Force L.A. and try and make it 4-3 and coming very, very close twice. Duran takes it away now, brings it in over the L.A. line. Darrell, right side for Mark Fredrickson. Freddie across the way, knocked away by Ebert, picked up by Lane. Back out of the neutral zone, Tony Ballinger cuts it for Fredrickson. 
Freddie leads it for Bellinger. Late, they got a piece, and now Collins comes away with it. Two on three. Michael Collins over midfield. Into the attack zone. Off the boards, one and Ebert. It's on the wrong side of him. Collins blocked it, but now Fredrickson picks it up. And they're running here in St. Louis. Durant over the line, three on three. Darrell cuts it right on Chris White. Right side for foul zone from 45. Left footed drive, blocked. And now Harris just dives on it as that ball was deadened enough for him. 2.45 to go. Tim Harris has settled it down, guys. I'm not sure they want to run back and forth right now at this juncture with the Steamers. Not with the Steamers having a little momentum. Tim Harris holding it. Now playing it long, too long, and catching it on the Steamers bench is Adi Coker. Well, that's what pressure will do. Not only pressure on the ball, but pressure off the ball. We were really putting pressure on, on the keeper, but then I saw our defenders all over their forward. So he got a little excited, tried to play it off the boards and put it in the bleachers. 2.27 to go. Third quarter, quarter two Los Angeles. Slub off near the laser red line. Cuts it right side to Chris Kenny. Slobo has a 